Oh boy! Cool. Hello everybody, how are you guys doing today? You guys doing great, fantastic? Cause I am. <laughs> it was actually a pretty decentish day. It was actually relatively busy, so uh, the day actually passed by relatively quickly. Uh, so I should preface this outright. Um, one, I will be re-uploading this to YouTube. So right after this stream, I'm gonna go straight to editing. Cause, uh, you know, um, I don't want like, in case there's any stream mess ups uh, or stream hiccups, AKA uh, funny Twitch being, uh, I will at the very least be able to go ahead and um, I'll be able to at least have something uploaded so that way you guys can watch on your own time sometime after tomorrow. Um, also, I get to now change this back to dark because my god, bright is so bright. Sweet Jesus. But anyways. Yeah, so, um, I... So, so the reason why I'm kind of using the theme is so that way there's like some background music in the background, but it should be turning off once we start playing the video. I do have some tabs open, uh, some data that I might bring up uh, in the video, but overall, oh yeah, I need to open up my notepad. But originally, realistically speaking, I was only really going to watch parts of the video, and I was actually, cause I was watching it previously, and I was cutting it up so that way maybe I can like, there's some parts that I don't need to watch. But truth be told, he actually did stuff say in the video, you should watch this in its entirety. So I'm gonna watch this in its entirety. So I'll be doing that. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? So I have my notes here, ready. Uh, hopefully the PC won't be too slow because I'm doing some processes in the background because my stupid self did not notice uh, my hard drive is getting full. So let's get this started. All right, so I should preface this as well. Um, at the very end of the day, these are just opinions. Uh, so I would absolutely positively heed my call to be respectful, to be, um, don't be a jackass is what I'm going to just basically outright say. Don't be stupid, you know, respect people's opinions. Don't go harassing people because I sure as hell won't be, uh, condoning that by any means necessary. I'm just critiquing a video as a Mega Man slash Capcom fan. And that's about it really. But yeah. Otherwise, let's begin. If I have released this video on time, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If I released it late, then I offer you the same but belated there sentiment. I'd like to add a short disclaimer before we start. I relinquish all ownership and copyright, legal or perceived, of all ideas That's crazy. Why would you do that? <laughs> or other suggestions enclosed within this video and hereby declare that Capcom or other applicable parties may make Also, them I will say fit. I'm going to be this pausing quite to often to give commentary. I'm not just going to watch Capcom the entire video parties. in its entirety without doing so. Criticism, refrain from hurtful or vulgar language, demands or threats. Anybody found doing so in response to this video are wholly disavowed by myself, my channel, and my brand. Thank you. All right. So, do you as he says, uh don't do anything stupid. Be respectful. Don't harass anyone. Don't harass the guy. Don't harass Capcom. Don't do any of that. Just, you know, keep a clear head. Be a, be a gentle soul. And, you know, do your thing. Um, I do have some timestamps here that I'm going to pause here and there. And I'm going to, like, you know, give my opinions and whatnot. So just to give you the preface of how I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to actually say things, not just sit there and watch and not do very much of anything. So keep that in mind as we play. I'm going to continue now. Dear Capcom and to all others whom it may concern. Hello to you all. This video is coming from the perspective of me as myself and not the lovable yellow reploid I personify on this channel. 
I've been a fan of Mega Man for as long as I have been able to form memories. Some of my earliest memories are literally waking up to watch the Ruby Spears Mega Man cartoon in the early morning before being whisked off to daycare and then eventually kindergarten. I was immediately attracted to the colorful cast of characters, fascinating premise of robots fighting or helping humanity, and the charming heroism of Mega Man himself, as expertly portrayed by Ian James Corlett behind the voice. One day, while on vacation in Florida, a hurricane had hit, and our vacation was basically kept indoors for the remainder as the beaches were now off limits. Yeah, that's the water for you. went to a mall and got a Super Nintendo to give us something to do, which had just come out at the time, and we loved it. Some time later, my parents brought home Mega Man X1 for Super Nintendo because they recognized the name Mega Man and remembered that I loved the cartoon a lot, and the the singular Mega Man action figure that I got from it, which I still have proudly displayed on my desk. I now had a way to interact with Mega Man anytime I wanted, instead of randomly hoping to catch it on TV, long before I understood broad- So, he's prefacing essentially the history he has with Mega Man. I'm gonna be real, my history is not that deep. It's actually, hey, hey uh, you know, how you doing? It's not that deep, but I mostly started with the X series. I didn't really do much of the classics per se. And uh, I didn't watch the show until like much, much later, to be honest with you. So, but in case you didn't know, this guy just maybe, possibly might like Make a Man. A little tinsy bit. But yeah, he's gonna go into this for a bit. And then he's going to get into uh, the video itself, so we're almost done with this part. Casting schedules. I didn't understand why Mega Man X seemed so different from the cartoon I watched. Also, in case you're wondering, why do I have, like, the mouse there and the play button stuff there? Uh, well, I'm more inclined for you to watch the video on your own if you truly want to enjoy the whole video uh you're watching me react so enough to watch the meteoric rise of my favorite blue bomber i have a i have a hunch a little tiny hunch where there is a meteoric rise there is inevitably a meteoric fall and what i fear to be a mega man extinction event oh god someday 2011. <laughs> the following is an open letter to Capcom. Let it be known, I have always been a Capcom fan. A diehard one at that. Mega Man was my gateway into this fantastic company that has created some of the best games the video game industry has ever seen. And I'm not even including Street Fighter or Resident Evil in that statement. However, I would be grossly understating my disappointment if I were to leave things at that. I hope... Sincerely, that should my words reach. Man, like, ugh. every time I see this game, I get depressed, bro. <laughs> this game is such a crazy ass game, but it just, it just, it was too ahead of its time, bro. Talking about God Hand. Uh, but I will say this I will absolutely say this. Pay wholeheartedly attention to the tone as the video goes on because it's it's a very interesting tone and I'm definitely going to be covering it and like talking about the way I feel and the way uh, others feel because I, I at least personally speaking I feel a bit different when it comes to Mega Man versus a lot of Mega Man fans so um, keep that in mind of anybody at Capcom who has the ability to send them up the chain towards people with decision people were not ready for God hand upon them I don't claim to speak for every single Capcom fan but I have a strong hunch that what I have to say strongly reflects the sentiments of the majority of Mega Man fans also Capcom we want a new Mega Man game we are tired of waiting we are tired of these long stretches of time with absolutely no updates we are tired of anniversaries coming and going without anything of substance occurring. We are tired of holding on hope for something that is never coming. Okay, so, so I'm going to pause it right here. Uh, very nice uh, 
view. I'm actually gonna do myself a favor and turn this off real quick, and then I'm gonna um that way because uh I think it, I think it's actually been intrusive. Um, yeah. So that's the premise of this of the video. It's basically, um, he pooted. Number one. Uh, number two. Uh, he uh. Ew. But the thing I wanted to mention, if Twitch is having an issue with um uh streaming, I kind of found a bit of a conspiracy theory esque reason as to why Twitch is messing up. But YouTube should be ad free, so you can go ahead and watch it there on un uninterrupted, just in case it is there. Keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, so that's the premise of the video. As a Mega Man fan, they haven't said anything. I haven't really done very much of the game. It's been years since the, there's been much of anything in terms of like an actual full-fledged game. And he's tired. So uh, I'll, I'll go on I'm an opinion about it as time goes on, but that's essentially what he's presenting. And then uh, uh, he, he's going to talk about uh, covering himself, a.k.a. why the rear's up there. Just to cover my rear end, if a new major Mega Man project gets announced shortly after this gets published, please disregard the remainder of the video. Well, maybe... I think I have a slight idea of what he wants. A very slight idea of what video he wants, of what, what game he wants. Very slight idea. Very slight. I think. Maybe don't. There's still quite a lot that needs to be heard. Nevertheless, Mega Man fans are tired of waiting. On that, I think we can all agree. So if nothing else, I hope at least that much reaches Capcom loud and clear. For anyone eager to add your own comments, I urge you all to please keep it respectful, but be firm. Threats and childish foot stamping would turn away anyone from humoring your demands. I think from here so. on out, I'd like to just offer my own opinions. I hope that many of you out there Share them with me. If you don't want to hear the entire sappy preamble and just want to skip to my list of demands, skip to the following timestamp. Although, I think hearing everything in full will paint a much fuller picture and can put in perspective exactly why I'm making this urgent call to action. Yeah, so, like I said before, originally I was going to cut it up, like, cut up the intro, things like that, and kind of just go from there and skip around but i do want to be fair if i'm going to critique something if i'm going to provide commentary of any sort about a video i should play the whole thing in its entirety it's only fair and um so another thing you're going to notice as well is um to kind of uh i don't want to make it seem like i'm leeching off the guy um so you're not going to see ads on the video itself. And it's not because I have an ad blocker or anything. I don't even know if people even found a good ad blocker. But I have YouTube Premium. So I'm, I'm still, even though I'm reacting to him, I'm still giving him the view and the and the revenue that he does deserve. Because he, he did make the video. It's, it's only fair. So uh, I, I implore everyone to do the same. Uh, it's in the YouTube description, uh, first thing. And I'm also going to provide it in the video as well once it gets to that. So... Uh, do keep that in mind. Thank you. This is far more than the average Mega Man fans complain again sort of rant. As I mentioned, I've seen Mega Man explode with popularity and critical acclaim starting in the 90s. Mega Man was already a very strong franchise to begin with before I was even born, but I watched it charge up and blast away with seemingly no way to stop it. Getting a new Mega Man game each Christmas as a child, and then any others upon release with my own money, was always such a great feeling. There came a point in the early 2000s, however, where Mega Man seemingly reached its pinnacle. There were tons of Mega Man games everywhere you looked, and all in such short order. Some might even say that the market was saturated with too much Mega Man, but for me, as a Mega Man fan, I loved it. It felt like... So... To get to why he is quote unquote controversial, uh, he's done some things uh, that people didn't agree with, uh, and people formed their opinions on that. Uh, he and I, technically speaking, never interacted by any means necessary. 
Um, the only thing I can really uh, think of is like things that kind of correlate with Shadow Rock, but at the end of the day, I'm my own person. So, um, but I do have my qualms with him because um, there was a, a thing that he did do a while ago that did not sit very well with me. And it was a pretty bad first impression to say the least, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to use that against him in here because, well, that already happened in the past. At this, at the end of the day, I'm here just watching a Mega Man video that he created. I'm going to see what we're going to say about it, and I'm going to be fair, regardless of how I feel. Um, <clears throat> everyone has their different tolerances and opinions about the guy, but this is not about that. I have no, I don't want to even really bring that, but I do want to, at the very least, address that. This is what I will address, though. Um, so as we know. The 2000s, uh, a lot of Mega Man games came out. A lot. He's going to put them on the screen in a bit, but a lot of them did come out. And as he stated, he is a fan and he loves it because as any fan of a series would, would appreciate, if a, if a dev puts out so many games of your favorite franchise, then of course you're going to be happy, right? Absolutely. And I I, I do feel like... I, mean, I, I say I, I'm happy, too. Because, like, you know, I love Mega Man, and a bunch of Mega Man games came out, and it was pretty great, pretty awesome. However, if I really have to sit there and think about it, and if I have to be as objective as possible, as a fan, absolutely, it was a great thing. But it was also the worst thing that ever happened to Mega Man, in my opinion. That 2000s, when all those Mega Man games just boomed, was, it was the biggest double-edged sword I've ever seen. Uh, especially looking back at it now. At the time, you no one ever saw that. No one ever saw it as that. But now, damn, that's bad. And we are 100% facing the repercussions of it. You know? Um, it's uh, pretty rough. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I cannot in good conscience agree to the fact that that time period was good for Mega Man. It, I, in my opinion, it was overall bad. Sure, we got a bunch of games. Sure, we got a bunch of series that we all love and adore and cherish, right? But in doing so, it truly set the road for Mega Man. And that really sucks. And it's why we're here today. So... Yeah, I'll elaborate that more as time goes on, because we're going to go back to that uh, sentiment, but we'll see. Like things couldn't get any better, but then it, it did get better. For me personally, anyway. Mega Man Legends 3 was announced. I was so excited. I paid for a plane ticket to fly my best friend of the whole world, known online as Mugen Zero, out to my side of the country, and we both attended New York Comic Con 2010 together to see the Legends 3 panel, and see what exactly they were going to announce for it, as information was very scarce at the time. But before you jump to conclusions that this is just another Mega Man Legends 3 cancellation whining session, I think you'll find it to be very important to understand how we arrived where we are now. This is the nexus point that started it all. I do want to preface this before I continue. I know people really loved the legend series and people were very upset that legends 3 got canceled um i don't think i made this very public but at the very same time i never necessarily denied it either but i'm going to be honest with you to this very day i still don't care about legends and i'll go into why I kind of feel that way in terms of Mega Man when we start talking about its oversaturation. But personally speaking, I never really cared about Legends too much because I didn't really play very much. And then we all know it got canceled. I could not really bring myself to be... Like, I'm sad it happened, but at the very same time, it didn't really affect me very much. It, to me, it was like, all right... I guess, sure. Um, I just, I just couldn't find the. I, I like, I'm not gonna lie to myself and pretend to care. I, I really didn't. And 
Uh, but it is overall a very sad thing for like a whole f uh like even though it's not your favorite franchise, but um, it still sucks because then it kind of created this domino effect of like, you know, where we're at now. So, but yeah, to like, I'm not gonna stay here and pretend like I I actually was very sad about this whole thing. People were, and I'm not gonna shit on people for that. Absolutely not. Like, hey, you you like your series, I like my series. Well, um. But I do want to preface that because I don't care. It sounds harsh, but I don't. For my very eyes, a game I had been waiting 10 years for was finally materializing. I actually left the panel early and ran to the Keiji Inafune autograph signing and prepared my copy of Mega Man X1 to be signed. And a food. That game was the true catalyst for my Mega Man obsession, after all. I am an X boy. I will say that. Who helped start it all. For the last 25 years, Inafune had been there the Mega Man franchise, there guiding it, cultivating it, and generally was responsible for the enormous Mega Man boom in the early 2000s. So I was honored to have him sign my game. I gushed to him and his interpreter about how Mega Man inspired me to try and be a good person. I won't lie, that's pretty how cool. Inafune inspired me to try to get into game development, and a bunch of other mushy stuff that came right from the heart. He seemed very touched at what I had to say. I got a picture with him, I played a demo for Mega Man Universe, and then the rest of Comic-Con was mostly forgotten by me because that was the highlight of my life up to that point. Well, ex except for a story involving a certain Mega Man fan film and the team behind it who were also there, but that's a story for another time. I still have the copy- Yeah, uh... He tends to be very opinionated about his stuff, and, um... Sometimes it lands them into trouble. Uh, I get it. I I understand, but um, some people don't like that. <laughs> um, but it is very bizarre to look and think about Inafune, considering the events that occurred. Man, like, holy. Moly. I do remember this film. I I've only ever saw it once, and I legit don't remember. But my god. That was such a long time ago. Kind of the same thing with the I think they did like a Phoenix Wright film as well. I don't know if there was the same people, but it, there was a, another like a I believe it was a fan film of Phoenix Wright. And that was art as well, but yeah, um, yeah, Inafune is, uh, he's, he's an individual. I don't hate him by any means necessary, but, uh, it is very odd to think, considering he was, he was definitely hailed as, like, the king of games, I guess. And, well, look at him now. Copy of the DVD you guys gave me. Sorry for the things I said. But the very next year... Just when my love of Mega Man could not have gotten any bigger, it seemingly touched an instant death spike, and I've honestly never recovered from it. I won't get into all the details of what happened, but the short version is Keiji Inafune resigned, or maybe he was fired, from Capcom, and immediately... Hey, that's not child-friendly. Every single Mega Man project in the works at the time was cancelled, including Mega Man Legends 3. I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried on that day. As you all know, if you're a fan of this channel, the lore of Mega Man is my bread and butter, and Legends is yeah. the end of the Mega Man timeline. The cancellation of Legends 3, to me at least, felt like a lost chapter of the Epic of Gilgamesh was discovered, and was then suddenly lost in a fire. I'll never know just how this massive story 30 plus years in the making ends. But let's say you weren't even a fan of Mega Man Legends. Let's say you're a regular Mega Man fan. The cancellation of Legends 3 wasn't that big of a deal to you, right? Well, my friends, That's you me. couldn't have predicted exactly what was to follow. From 2011 to 2018, there were zero, count them, zero new Mega Man games with some ex I get it. I get it got the joke um 
But yeah, there's gonna be a point like that's coming up very shortly. I'm gonna like leave it on pause and I want you to watch the entirety. If I were even gonna play a game, but I'll wait for him to get to that point. Extremely minor exceptions. For 2011, there were a few mobile releases like Mega Man Rush Marine, which was an extremely basic shoot 'em up for phones and some other niche mobile games. I love Schmucks. saw Street Fighter X Mega Man which was actually just a fan game that Capcom officially licensed. This, to me, is still the funniest thing Capcom's ever done. Some dudes literally were like, we're going to make a funny fan game. And Capcom's like, you know what? Great. We don't got shit anyways. Let's just slap our name on it and uh, promote that shit. Yeah, we care. We care about me. <laughs> It was so nuts, man. Oh my gosh. that That's funny. I mean, to be fair, like, it's better to slap your, your, the name, your name there than to be like, take that shit down. Can't like, no, take it down. Like, stop that. It's so funny, dude. Like, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this was insane. Dude. <laughs> Oh man, I, it, I'm pretty sure it's still free out there to play, right? I'm not crazy, right? I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna continue, but oh my god. Comedy gold, Capcom. 2015 gave us the first Legacy Collections for Mega Man Classic. 2017 gave us Mega Man 1 through 6 on mobile phones. And that was basically it. You can go to the list of Mega Man video games article on Wikipedia and see whatever I left out. But the main point I'm getting across is this. For eight entire years, there were no new Mega Man games. Only ports, collections. Uh, I think... I think I found his favorite type of game, you guys. I think. A fan game and some mobile phone trash. I have a hunch! There wasn't even the plethora of model kits we have to enjoy nowadays. In comparison, here's what else Capcom released from 2010 to 2018, not counting collections. All right, let's play a game. Let's play a game, you guys. Guess how many games he's going to name. I, 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 I'm going to assume I counted correctly. But guess the number of games that he had that he's going to list. Whoever's the closest... I'll give you a free sub or membership on YouTube. Oh, actually, no, I can't. I'll have to do the membership later because I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, done that just yet. But if you, if you can, if you accurately guess it, I'll give you like a a free sub. But um, keep in mind, he's talking about any Capcom game that came out during that period. That's not Mega Man. I'm gonna play it in its entirety. I'm going to let you guys guess. And then we'll see who's closest. All right. And also, the more important thing besides that, the other thing I also want you guys to pay attention to is listen to his tone as he lists the games. Let's go. I've tried to keep these in their general chronological release order, so feel free to visit the Giant Bomb page I got this information from to see for yourself. I have left out certain titles for brevity, as they are Capcom published, but not necessarily Capcom intellectual properties. 2010, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, Ultimate All-Stars, Street Fighter 4, Lost Planet 2, Ghost Trick, Ghosts and Goblins, Gold Knights 2, Monster Hunter Diary, Dead Rising 2, Dead Rising 2 Case Zero, Sengoku Basara, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, Dead Rising for iOS, Dead Rising 2 Case West, 2011, Bionic Commando Rearmed 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Okami Den, Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D, Resident Evil The Mercenaries vs., Monster Hunter Dynamic Hunting, Street Fighter 4 Volt, Sengoku Basara Chronicles Heroes, Monster Hunter Diary, Poke Poke Aidu Village G, Resident Evil Revival Selection, Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, Sengoku Basara 3 Utage, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, 2012, Resident Evil Revelations, Ashura's Wrath, Street Fighter X Tekken, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, Dragon's Dogma, Onimusha Soul, Pazuru in Airao, 
Resident Evil 6, EX Troopers, Dead Rising The Survival, 2013, DMC Devil May Cry, Monster Hunter Frontier G, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, Remember Me, Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mistara, Monster Hunter Frontier G2, Dragon's Dogma Quest, Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies, Lost Planet 3, Pachi Slot Biohazard 5, Monster Hunter Frontier G3, Street Fighter X All Capcom, Dead Rising 3, Geist Crusher, Monster Hunter 4, 2014, Sengoku Basara 4, Strider, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Monster Hunter Frontier GG, Street Fighter 4, Arena, Monster Hunter Frontier G5, Geist Crusher God, Street Fighter Puzzle Spirits, Breath of Fire 6, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, 2015, Resident Evil Revelations 2, Street Fighter Battle Combination, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, The Great Ace Attorney Adventures, Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi, Dragon's Dogma Online, Monster Hunter Explore, Monster Hunter Generations, Monster Hunter Online, 2016, Street Fighter 5, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, Umbrella Cores, Sengoku Basara Sanada Yukimuraden, Monster Hunter Stories, Dead Rising 4, 2017, Resident Evil 7, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, Ultra Street Fighter 2, The Final Challengers, Street Fighter 4, Champion Edition, The Great Ace Attorney 2, Resolve, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Puzzle Fighter, 2018, Monster Hunter World. Let's tally that up. Street Fighter, approximately 11... Before we get into, he gets into the actual uh, game series titles, if your guess was... Assuming my count is correct, 84 games? Well, congratulations, you won. <laughs> but, um, he did seem to have counted games that even, like, they, they, even though they never ported to America, he still, he counted those games, but 84 games, my dudes. <laughs> Holy, I was like, oh my god. God, that's a lot. Because I, I actually sat there and, like, counted each year and then counted it up and tallied it up. Uh, fun fact, the most was 2013 at 15 Capcom games. Uh, but if you paid attention to the tone, uh, Son Angel, you got it right. Your boy didn't seem very happy. Uh, he got quite, quite... Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and I get it. Uh, to see all those games come out, meanwhile, your favorite series has not even been touched. Uh, it sucks. A lot. Uh, I will add one thing, though. Sure, a bunch of those games did come out and whatnot and things like that. Keep in mind, though, Capcom themselves weren't doing so hot either. Is so even though you see all these games come out, and even though like it seems like very monumental and things like it seems like very huge, Capcom they were not those guys. They were they were not them. They were they were struggling at a certain point, and. Ooh. <laughs> Case in point, Resident Evil 6. Great logo, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to unpause, because you're going to go over like the, the three main titles, which maybe you can probably guess which series he truly hates the most. Just by tone. I'm just saying. Street Fighter franchise games. Five more if you count the Marvel vs. series for a total of 16 Street Fighter or fighting game games. And that's not even counting the collections that released. Resident Evil, nine Resident Evil games, again, not counting collections. Monster Hunter, the most egregious offender, with a whopping 19 entries made up of new games and expansions to existing ones. Let's outline what new and original games released for Mega Man, again, not counting collections. In 2010, we got Mega Man 10. In 2012, we got Street Fighter X Mega Man and Rockman Crossover. And that's it. 
at least until 2018 when Mega Man 11 finally released. To put that in perspective for you, that means after Mega Man 10, the only new Mega Man content to release was an officially licensed fan game that Capcom instead spun as an anniversary celebration. <laughs> of Fighter, that I must stress, they themselves did not develop. And a really terrible Japanese exclusive mobile game that is universally panned for being low effort and bad. Besides those two. So I'm going to be honest with you. I have zero knowledge, zero recollection towards Rockman Crossover. I just heard of it. And I've seen that design with the floof on his shoulders and whatnot. But otherwise, I never really did very. I, I never really cared, to be honest. I don't know. Um, but I mean, I've never heard anything positive about it. So you guys tell me. Um, but uh, yeah, like I get it, right? But. There's a reason why in Japan there's a Rathlo statue. I'm just saying. Japan loves their Monster Hunter. I should also mention too about Monster Hunter. Um, Monster Hunter was not always very popular here in the West. In fact, it took quite a long time for Monster Hunter to really pick up steam. Until eventually it is now what it is, where it's like uh, this behemoth of a game. But way back when, like I got into Monster Hunter in Monster Hunter Try, three, the one in the Wii, and it was like you had like a very small uh, fan base in the West, but it was mostly all in the East. I forgot the name of the campaign, but I remember there was a campaign to bring over Portable Third. Or what, another one of those games? And then eventually they started bringing uh, Monster Hunter. Uh, they, they started going into it. Like, I think uh, Try got a, like an updated version called 3U. And then they, then they brought it over 4U, Generation, so on and so forth. So at that point, they were touching their toes when it came to uh, Monster Hunter. But yeah, uh, it took a while for Monster Hunter to get to where, to get to where it's at. So, you know, that is a thing. Also, Resident Evil, um, people just love Resident Evil. Like, Resident Evil 4 was a godsend to people. And to this very day, people still love Resident Evil Remake, the, the, the OG. Uh, they still love that game. Even though that game came out of the GameCube, still love it to this very day. Not to mention that game and Resident Evil 4 kept getting ported to all these goddamn series, I mean, all these consoles. That uh, well, yeah, no wonder they have somebody's. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 gonna keep going. But yeah, um, uh, 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 uh. you'll like world. But I'll get to that later. Two games. The only thing keeping Mega Man afloat were legacy collections. Not counting Mega Man 10, which I used as my starting point, we got two no effort games on Capcom's part across eight years, while Street Fighter, Resident Evil, and Monster Hunter got 16, 9, and 19 respectively, including new releases and expansions to existing games. True. So just for fun, here's a list of all the Mega Man games that were cancelled between 2010 and 2018. Mega Man Legends 3, Mega Man Universe, Rockman Online, Maverick Hunter, Mega Man... Man... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I pause it at a bad time, but it's also a good time too because this is another one that goes. <laughs> um, he counted those in Street Fighter, so eleven Street Fighter, but plus those sixteen, just to uh, just to preface. He did, he did he did kind of put the the two like separate but together at the same time. But that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we, we could have had a hell of a great Maverick Hunter making my next game. And of course, Star Force 4, but, you know, don't look up the sales for Star Force 3, that's what I'm going to tell you. Unless you want to break your heart, then by all means, go right ahead. And Star Force 4 and Mega Man ZXC. 
That's six cancelled games versus the two that we actually got, and both of them were either low to no effort releases for Capcom, and that is only counting the cancelled games that we know of. For all we know, there's even more. We didn't even know it. about Mega Man Star Force 4 and the third ZX game until years after they were cancelled. I have to be honest with you. During this time period, I grew to resent and even hate Capcom. I had been a loyal customer for years. I forget that's a freaking enough to comprehend dialogue. Games <laughs> I gave them countless hours of my life and hard-earned dollars, formative years of my childhood, and now, for the last eight years, I got nothing in return. I was bitter for a long time. For eight straight years, I was bitter for what they had done in 2011 and the following years. Just sitting there watching as ProtoDude reported on each new cancelled project discovered. Mega Man Legends 3, Mega Man Universe, Rockman Online, Maverick Hunter, Man. and even more Mega Man games were cancelled that we wouldn't even learn about until years later. As a Mega Man fan, there was literally no reason to be happy anymore. There was the occasional new merchandise, and I guess the Legacy Collection was a good idea, even though Capcom had to be convinced. Listen, them collections seems like an easy cash grab. They did God's work. I'm just saying. Um, but I do understand why people are annoyed at the collections, though. Most because it's like, oh, you're just bringing the old games to newer platforms. And that's why I like it a lot, to be honest with you. To me, anytime they did collections, it was more so, okay, cool, I no longer have to yank out my NES or whatever. Or Super NES. I can literally just play my game on, like, your your current console. And that's why I loved it. Because it's like, you know, I don't want to get that stuff out. And I sure as hell didn't buy the mobile games. Oh, hell no. I'm talking about, like, the mobile 1 through 6 and decks and things like that. But, uh, yeah. I mean, he does mention that the collection did was the reason why Mega Man Love is a thing. But, um, I didn't mind it. You may not have you. You, may, you don't have to really care, to be honest with you. But at the very same time, uh, regardless of what you think, I mean, they did God's work. They they definitely are the reasons why we even got something. But we'll go over. We'll we'll uh, say a bit more after that. To make it, yeah, go look up that story one day when you have the time. The box for my Mega Man X Darts figure even still has a logo and website listed for the Legends 3 dev room on the inside. I wonder how much that's worth. the only surviving physical proof that it even ever existed, now that Capcom has taken down that entire forum. Every single piece of news, new piece of evidence, new cancelled game reveal, each passing anniversary with nothing happening, all led fans to believe that Capcom not only didn't care about Mega Man or the fans, but that they were actively working against them. Each year lacking any news honestly felt like a middle finger to an otherwise dedicated and loyal fan base. <laughs> and then, something amazing happened. Deep within the gallery mode for the Legacy Collection for Classic Mega Man, some artwork of Mega Man wearing some sort of strange armor popped up. Dude, this was, this was literally those you had to be there moments. I, I listen. I'm also going to say, I'm happy the Mega Man 11 is, is a thing came out. I'm be real with you. I am not a big fan of when it comes to even giving love or like it, 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 in, in, at least to Capcom in order for them to even be convinced of like, maybe like, how should we go about making a game? It always seems like they resort to the classics. I was never a big fan of that. Not to say I don't like the classic series. It's just it's not like my favorite series. Now I'll, I'll be I'm I'm selfish. I'm like, bro, where's my axe, bro? Where's my battle network, bro? Hell, where's my star first, bro? Although I know why that didn't do, you know, but you know. Uh but at the very end of the day, um you kinda have to be happy overall that 
they're even looking at the freaking thing to begin with. But this, this came out. Dude, the, the tinfoil hats came on. The magnifying glasses came out, bro. We we're like, where did this come from? Oh my, what is, what? Oh my God, there's a new Mega Man game on the horizon. Oh, dude, that's just some canceled bullshit in you. Ah, there was so much talks, dude. I, I can tell you outright. When it came, I, I can testify. When it came to that admin chat or staff chat and Shadow Rock server, God, it was alive. It was insane. And then, you know, the events kind of unfold, and I'll let him talk about that. Seemingly as some sort of boss weapon. Eric, go ahead, Dom. The only problem is that it wasn't from the game it was listed under in the gallery. In fact, it wasn't from any game anyone had seen before. The designs, the art style, everything seemed like this was a new piece of concept art. And yet, because of the eight years of passive abuse Capcom subjected us to, literally nobody could believe it was an easter egg for a new Mega Man game that Capcom put in there for us to find. In fact, people at the time speculated that it was actually from an already cancelled game and Capcom simply mistakenly placed it into the gallery mode for the Legacy Collection. That is how little faith people had in Capcom. We Guys, are we really that punished to the point where if we even get a crumb, we're like, nah, bro, that's just, that's just deleted footage, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame people for thinking. I mean, I, I, I'll be real. I, I, I wouldn't think that this is like I. I have to give Capcom credit, right? Capcom. There's so many problems with Capcom. It's not even funny. I have so many issues when it comes to Capcom. Not even just on the Mega Man side and like on its whole thing, but I will say this is probably like the biggest brain move they've ever done just put the art in the in the collection and just make people talk and make people lose their minds and that's precisely what happened people lost their minds it was it was it was it was crazy it's like oh there's a new make no you're crazy you're stupid you're dumb what are you what are you stupid there ain't gonna be no new game idiots and well yeah um uh little do we know we were all so beaten and battered that even when Capcom is shoving official art for a new game that we had never seen before right in our faces, our first assumption was that it was from an already cancelled game and was included by accident. That's abysmal. This was the absolute rock bottom for Mega Man. Guys. Now, I know we, we know the games came out. But how pissed would you be if let's just pretend we're back at this timeline. We just see this piece of art and we're losing our minds. How pissed would you be if nothing came from this? Like Capcom literally just said, oh shit, they were never supposed to see that. And then just nothing happened. How pissed would you be? Although it's kind of hard to pretend how pissed you'd be if, you know, it just, you know what I mean. But hypothetically speaking, you know, like it's, it's crazy to think about. Just, just imagine like this just didn't happen. That's nuts. That's crazy to think about. Man. But God, we didn't live in that timeline. But to everyone's astonishment. It wasn't a ruse. It was real. It was an actual Easter egg for Mega Man 11, which later came out in 2018. During this time, that would be I had fucked just up. started my channel, <laughs> and Mega Man 11 was literally announced while I was editing Time Skimmer Episode 2, forcing me to go back and make up an excuse about why it wouldn't be included in my comprehensive timeline video series because it was literally history in the making. And the timeline that I understood up to that point was about to completely change. Mega Man 11 came out 
and would go on to be one of the best-selling Mega Man games of all time. Mega Man was back, and we all collectively cheered for the triumphant return. A ton of legacy collections were then... I don't know if you remember, but when that stream was going on, when they had the the anniversary stream, and then they kind of, they had like that animation cartoon thing of like 8-Bit Mega Man just kind of going through the different games and whatnot, and then like through the years, and when he got to like 2011, and just there was just nothing, that giant ass gap. I still remember laughing my ass off when that happened, because it's like, damn bro. They really just, there was just nothing. And uh, even though uh, 11 wasn't like the game that I wanted, it's still a pretty fucking cool thing. It's like, wow. Not only did they make a new game, but it looks really nice. It's, I mean, look at it. Look at that shit. Just great. Not to mention it's like, you know. Oh, to Arch, I'll go into that later. Then announced in the years following, the X Legacy Collections, Zero and yep. ZX Legacy Collection, yep. Battle Network Legacy Collections, all of which brought these games to modern consoles and PC, which goes a long way towards preserving them, as without these collections, you'd have to buy a decades-old console to play most of them. We were on a roll. There was no way you could stop the momentum of this hype train. Not only was Mega Man back, but Capcom had a new guy in the captain's chair for Mega Man, Kazuhiro Tsuchiya, making bold promises that Mega Man was back, here to stay, and they recognized that there were fans for all kinds of Mega Man, and they had plans to please them all. Yeah. 2019 came and went with nothing new, but we were so happy about Mega Man 11 that we didn't care. With the steady release of legacy collections and merchandise, we were all sure that Mega Man was back for good. In 2020, Mega Man X Dive would be released and would actually turn out to be a massive love letter to the Mega Man franchise. Boy, we was it! Some doubt that it was another mobile game instead of a full release, and it had gotcha game elements, which are generally considered to be very predatory. Ah, yes, Mega Man's first introduction to gotcha, <laughs> baby! <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> to put this in perspective, I've already delved into Fire Emblem Heroes, and I was into a lot of the gacha games at the time. So this was nothing new to me. So when I when I learned that they're making a gacha game for Mega Man X, you bet your ass I was excited. Oh baby, I was happy. <laughs> And then we know how that went. And then we know how that went. We'll get to that later. But in spite of everything working against it, X-Dive was a unifying game in the franchise for most. Every single subseries got some sort of attention. The game was called X-Dive, but like the X in Mega Man X, it must have stood for infinite potential. It could be anything. Classic, X, Zero, ZX, Legends, Battle Network, and even a little Star Force got some representation. It was the first time in nearly a decade that we were seeing actual effort going into the Mega Man franchise. And while that effort was much appreciated, there was an uncomfortable question hanging over the entire community's head. So when are we getting an actual new game? Uh, hello, it's right there. It's called Mega Man X Dive. Duh, stupid. Like, what, what, what are you, what are you, dumb? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but, um... Uh, man, can you imagine having to look and think, dude, the success, the, the, uh, Mega Man's life is literally in the hands of a gotcha game, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. If that's not a monkey's paw position, wish, I, oh, jeez. Oh, boy, baby. Um, But yeah, like, 
Ooh. And then, like, when the game did come out, and then we kind of got the feel of how Capti was. Damn, son. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Oh, man. But here's the thing, right? Regardless of what you think of gotcha games, regardless of what you think of um, Mega Man uh, X Dive or Rockman X Dive, regardless, re. Regardless of the fact, you know, this game made a lot of money. Maybe not all the money in the world, but it did make a lot of money. Maybe to kind of sort of maybe convince Capcom, be like, you know what? It's alright. <laughs> um, but regardless of what you think of, uh, how you think of the gotcha games and whatnot. It did a service to Mega Man, you know? It brought interest. It definitely uh, put eyes on things. And uh, to this very day, Mega Man isn't necessarily dead. It's just kind of there, you know? Um, basically. Um, yeah, I spent about, uh, I think... I have to look back at the chart, but I, I do believe it was around 3K. Like, I, I, I dropped 3K in... Uh, and dive. So, I mean, that's 3K that was, that went to Capcom's wallet that was not going there for the past eight years. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, damn, man. And also, uh, uh, and I'll get more, I'll get more into, uh, how, People think uh, Mega Man is dead. Uh, have you met? Have you met Darkstalkers? And actually, it's one of my best friend's favorite game series. And in fact, I I I I am ashamed to admit that I had to remind myself that this series existed. But have you met Dino Crisis? <laughs> They're suffering right now. <laughs> Although they got something in a sense, kinda. We'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> it's January. <laughs> I had to remember Tidal Crisis existed since Mega Man Eleven was released. X Dive has shut down their primary servers and mercifully release the game on Steam in an offline mode for people to enjoy in perpetuity. Minus the online- Dude, Lost Planet is a goddamn tragedy, man. Like, Lost Planet, like, I liked one, and two was like, I wish I got into two, but unfortunately I never got Lost Planet 2, but I heard the multiplayer is legendary. But, um, give credit where credit is due. Rockman X Dive, offline, is something that most gotcha games don't ever get treatment for. Anytime a game EOSs, that's about it. It's done. It's gone. Unless fans somehow manage to bring it back and like have like a fan server or something, it's gone. It's it's completely just in the vault. There have only been a very few amount of games that has ever done that to come back officially in some capacity. And the fact that Capcom was willing to bring back this gotcha game into like an offline playable version of it. And you you can say whatever you want about charging the $30. I think that's a fucking steal, in my opinion. Especially now with all these mods. They're adding a goddamn Digimon to this game now. By the way. That's insane. But that's besides the point. But you just do not. That's that's unheard of. It's insane that a gotcha game came back. And to be perfectly to be perfectly honest with you, the gotcha like the Mega Man X Dive, it's not the worst. It's not the best. But it's not the worst either. Like it was it's a fine surface of the game. What really absolutely made it shit and people poop caca. Was the net play? Was the balancing? Basically, the PvP, the whole that the whole that whole side, and of course the gotcha. 
But once you take that out, it's just a game that has a lot of shit to do. And that's respectable. I, I still have to buy this. I haven't bought it yet, but I'm going to. I'm definitely going to. Because um, I want to play it. Not to mention all those cool-ass mods. But um, regardless of how many times I shit on Capcom, and I'm still going to, by the way. I, I absolutely will shit on Capcom. All the time. I cannot... I cannot deny the fact that yeah, this is a uh, this is definitely a good move. Which, by the way, may not have happened if people didn't like Mega Man like that. I'm gonna be honest. If, if Mega Man wasn't that loved, if they didn't care about Mega Man that much, I'm pretty sure Dive wouldn't be around. But I can't say that mostly because I'm not Capcom. I'm just some dude watching some dude's video. So, you know, take what we're, take what we will. Online features of the game. While the collections released so far and X-Dive were much appreciated, there has still not been a new Mega Man game since Mega Man 11. The last game before that was Mega Man 10 in 2010. To refresh, that's still funny by the way. Skipped here from 2010 to 2023, not including collections. The only new Mega Man content across a 13-year period was Mega Man 10, Rockman Crossover, Street Fighter X Mega Man, X-Dive, and finally, Mega Man 11. Over a 13-year period, there has been five new releases versus six canceled Mega Man projects that we know of, which doesn't even break even, and only two of them are actual mainline releases. Crossover was a low-effort Flash game for mobile phones, and Street Fighter X Mega Man was not even developed by Capcom. Over that same 13-year period, not including collections, there have been 18 Street Fighter and Crossover releases or updated editions, 15 Resident Evil releases or updated editions, and 22 Monster Hunter releases, with a new Monster Hunter on the way projected for 2025. Yeah! Sorry. I'm going to put these numbers next to each other so you can visually understand the disparity. Every single year, people have asked for a new entry in the series. Important milestone anniversaries came and went. The 35th anniversary for the Mega Man franchise as a whole occurred in 2022. No game was announced. No new manga, no new animation projects, no new books, no new anything. Unlike the boom in promotional media contemporaries like Sonic the Hedgehog were, and are continuing to enjoy. The only major releases for the franchise after Mega Man 11, besides legacy collections, have been model kits, various selections of merchandise. All right, listen. I didn't know this existed. Okay. I kind of want some of these. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna let him talk a little bit more, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about my. Whole criticisms and whatnot with Catcom themselves, so uh, we'll, we'll wait a bit. And clothing. All of which the Mega Man intellectual property were sorely lacking in previously and are very welcome additions. Guys, I kind of want those zero in pieces enamel pin sets. <laughs> Lock is in bases, bro! Look at him! <laughs> but still, the question remains. When are we getting an actual new game? And that leads us to today. I am wrong. All right, so I'm going to talk about Capcom. I'm going to talk about my... um, How I truly feel about Capcom. And in my opinion, Capcom's biggest, biggest issue is that these fuckers play too goddamn safe. Too safe. At this point, I kind of feel like they could maybe do a game, maybe, possibly, but at the same time, you know, if you, I'm not going to pull up all the sales, right? But if you go back and look at all those Mega Man games that came out in the 2000s and you look at those sales, some are impressive. My girl banner number four, staying at the top, and your face banner number three. But, um, jokes aside, um, 
some games did pretty well. And other games... Holy shit. That's insane. So, to essentially talk to Capcom now, and I'm just gonna pretend I'm, I'm, I'm Capcom Coom. You know, I'm just some guy. And Capcom's like, hey guys. Can we make a Mega Man game? I can only imagine what a monumental task that has to be to convince Capcom to make something new. Merchandising is not that hard, unfortunately. At least not as hard as selling a game. You can sell figures. To be honest, it doesn't even cost very much to do things like that. Pens, whatever, that sort of thing. Doesn't cost very much. But when it comes to like games and whatnot, um, it's a really hard, tall ask. So at the one end, I don't blame them for being extremely safe with Mega Man because they literally got completely burned on that aspect. But the question does come up as to like, why do they always concentrate on Mega Man? I'm sorry, why do they concentrate on Monster Hunter? Why do they concentrate on Street Fighter? Why do they concentrate on Resident Evil? I'm going to minimize this for a second. But I pulled up uh, two things. Number one, a very simplified top 10 best selling games in the series. Uh, I believe these are in the millions units. Okay. Look at Mega Man, and then look at Resident Evil. I guarantee you, if you were to talk to Capcom, and you, if you, you had that power to convince them, hey, let's make a game, I guarantee you, you will have a much, 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 much easier time convincing them to make a Resident Evil game than a Mega Man game. Okay? I watched Shadowrock's video. I may or may not reveal that later. Although, to be honest, most of my stuff, I'm in agreement with him, with the exception of some parts. Um, but the thing, that the, the one thing I do want to show that he showed off in his video, if you ever want to know, if you truly just want to see the numbers outright, why don't they make a Mega Man game? And why do they keep making Resident Evil games? Resident Evil, Resident Evil in general has 170 titles. Mega Man has 169 titles. But Mega Man's only really sold 41 million units. I should, I should preface, the numbers calculated are in millions. So Mega Man's only really sold 41 million. Meanwhile, Resident Evil triples that. And then some. Yeah. It's, yeah, I can see why they're making Resident Evil over Mega Man. I'm going to be perfectly fair here. Like, no shit. But I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to give some positivity to this. At the very least, he's top four. That's still a pretty fucking good number right here, right? Dragon's Dog might wish they were Mega Man right now. But, hey, 41 million? May not be very much, but it's still it's still a lot, you know. And is Mega Man the the question is is Mega Man dead? No, it's not. It might feel that way. I think I think a good comparison is whenever you see the temperature on your phone, it says it's like eighty five degrees, but it feels like a hundred degrees. It's kind of like that. Mega Man is not dead, but it sure as hell feels like it's dead. There's just really nothing. It's just, it's just kind of in that merch line. It's just kind of there. You know, just toys and shit. And then, like, it's in, like it's appearing in other games here and there. It's got, like, very funny crossovers like Encompass. It's in Teppin. Even though it's your own thing. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the collections, of course, you know. Hey! It's still a, it's still a thing around. In fact, the, the Legacy Collection, instead of just porting those games willy-nilly and doing whatever, they actually put an effort. So they do care. They do. It may not seem like it. It may not be that new game that you want, because I want a next game. I want a Star first game. But hey, they're doing something. So I, I, objectively speaking, it's not dead. It just isn't. 
that's a stupid thing to say. I like to poke fun at uh, uh, Mega Doomers, and I like to be a Mega Doomer here and there, but as a joke. Truth be told, I don't think Mega Man's dead. I do have a... Um, I do... I do have a, uh, I wouldn't say a new take, but I think a more clarified take of how, how I see Capcom. And I'll go into that in a bit, but the fact that these guys are still doing something, and not to mention, that Legacy Collection Battle Network sold a fucking lot. Now granted, the, the individual sales of the volumes, I don't really think they that math but hey that fucking collection did numbers it may have done like multi-million numbers but it did numbers so at the very least capcom may not be absolutely convinced but i would i would at the i would at the very least like to think it's on their mind still, in some way, shape, or form. Now, obviously, we don't really know if something's coming up. In fact, he's going to mention something that did come up. But uh, we'll get into that whole thing there. But overall, I will say Capcom does play extremely safe. They need to take some goddamn risks. But I also don't blame them for not taking these risks, because, you know... Uh... So, I mean, that's why we're here to begin with. So, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. We're going to get back to the video now. Writing this script on December 18th, 2023, a day after the 36th anniversary for the Mega Man franchise, and coincidentally... Actually, I just remembered, there is a, there's another big criticism I have with Capcom. These motherfuckers! At least say something. <laughs> Please. Say anything. Anything. Uh... I do understand the sentiment of, like, not hearing much of anything, and that does suck a lot, but, I mean, me personally speaking, I'm not gonna let it hurt me very much, mostly because, I mean, I'll get into my entire mentality of Capcom and how I feel about it in a, in a, at a later point, but, um... At this point, I'm just kind of at that point where it's like, eh, if something comes, something comes, but I'm not holding my breath type deal. But I do think yeah, maybe you should say something, anything, anything, just just say something. Just just throw a little party popper, you know, just like, oh, this is for Mega Man, God, Boop. that's it. But, you know, we, uh, um, we'll see. Uh, unfortunately, John, not everyone has your patience, as we are witnessing in this 57 minute and 40 second, uh, media. The anniversary of the Legends series, and there is still no new game in sight. I guess Capcom was just too busy jumping aboard the dying NFT train. This is the Mega Man content we've all wanted, right? The second funniest things Capcom has ever done. I still think the the taking the fan game and slapping their name on it is the funniest thing they've ever done. This is the second funniest thing they've ever done. Why? <laughs> Sorry. Right. In fact, Kazuhiro Tsuchiya in May of 2023. Just a few short years after sitting in the captain's seat for Mega Man, resigned from Capcom, leaving the franchise without leadership once again. Yeah, this, uh. Oh no, Mega Sisters, Mega Bros, oh dear, guys. Um, I will say, this does not help, uh, their case. If anything, this kind of bolsters the Mega Doomers case. I can kind of see that. Okay. Th this isn't a good look, but relax. Calm down. Take a chill pill. It ain't that bad. I say 
behind like a cage away from the mega fans. This is especially oh, worrying uh, given that Sachia san attributed uh, the lack of Mega Man hey, games in the wake of Inu. Thank you. Ah oh, shit. It did what I, it did the very bad thing I didn't want it to do. Um it was like actually wait. Uh I have so a time wait, stamp here. Without getting <sighs> I'm so awesome. Thank God for timestamps. Um uh we are going to twenty four fifty nine. So good. Hey, that's spoilers. Hey, that's spoilers. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. There right, we go. Uh, we're back to where we're at. After sitting in the captain's seat for Mega Man, resigned from Capcom, leaving the franchise without leadership once again. This is especially worrying, given that Tsuchiya-san attributed the lack of Mega Man games in the wake of Inafune's departure to the fact that Mega Man lacked anyone in the leadership role to direct the franchise like Inafune once did. He says that Inafune left big shoes to fill, and with him gone, nobody felt they were capable of being the Mega Man guy like he was. I can only assume I'm taking a very, very educated, but probably very, very incorrect guess that at least... Inafune had some sway and some influence, and then once he either left or got fired, I legit don't know, nor do I care. I slightly care, but I can only assume that even though he took the... Oh, God damn it. Um, it's sex-based. Oh, thank you. Um, I can only assume that they basically look at Tsuchiya and was like, okay, in terms of Mega Man, you're not in a Funai. You don't have the sway in terms of Mega Man. So I'm going to assume that anytime he wanted to do something for Mega Man, something significant for Mega Man, he got quite a lot of resistance. And then he did mention it here, but he did help direct Street Fighter, was it six? And yeah, um, I guess he just didn't want to take it. Um, I don't know, but uh, that's just an energy had to guess. I'm just some dude. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm just some guy. But that's my guess. It's like he tried to do something, but a lot of resistance came to be, and maybe he just got tired of it. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure telling people, hey guys, we're going to bring back Mega Man. Big promise, big trust. And then being told, all right, listen, Mega Man's cool and all, but that Street Fighter VI thing, guy. Go direct that shit. We need to, we need Cammy's yoga pants to be as tight as humanly possible. I need you to go help that right now immediately. And he probably was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll see though." But I'll continue. So with Tsuchiya san gone, we are right back where we started in 2010. Some people say Capcom doesn't care about Mega Man because it isn't as popular as their other games. That's cyclical logic. Capcom doesn't care about Mega Man because it's not popular enough. It's not popular enough because Capcom doesn't care about Mega Man. You can't make Mega Man more popular if you never even make more Mega Man games. If Mega Man got the same attention and care that Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, and Resident Evil did, it might be able to actually contend with them. I'm not So... I mean, there's a point. It's like, well, how do you know people aren't interested in Mega Man if you don't make something for Mega Man? That's a fair point. You know, you should maybe put something on the table. And maybe then people might care. But then it goes back to the whole double-edged sword in 2000. That giant mess there that he just 
They they basically shotgunned all those games. Like they literally just took a shotgun shell, shot all them pellets, and then we just got all those games. And yeah, it's like yeah, I kind of don't blame them for not wanting to make a game. Duh. Like, do you not remember what happened all those years ago, bro? Like, some of those games might have been fine, but most of those were not. And listen, bro, shit's expensive these days. And I hate to be the, the bearer of reality here, but at the end of the day, Capcom's a business. What do businesses want to do? Make money. And, uh, again, they have a very hard time being convinced that maybe we, we, we can make money with, uh, Mega Man. Um, if I had the, uh, if you have it, send it to me and I'll, I'll, uh, put it up. I don't have that. Uh, but it's like, cause I thought he did it. I mean, I was wrong. Um, but yeah, it's like, just to give you an, just, just to give an example, guys. I call Mega Man Battle Network the miracle game because one is a goddamn travesty. It's 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 a fucking miracle that game even got that many games and is considered to be like one of the best in the in, in of, of, all, of all Mega Man's. One was awful. It was awful. But do you know why that game stuck around? Cause they had one and two come out in the same year. That shit's fucking crazy. That's insane. How does that work? How the fuck do you create a whole new series for your franchise and then months later put up the sequel? The sequel that most people, myself included, to be really fucking good. And it's why Battle Network is on the map. Sure as hell wasn't one, tell you that much. But, yeah, it's like, there's just so much. Oh, God. But, yeah. So, his his whole thing of, like, oh, just make a Mega Man game to... Not, we'll definitely buy it. Well, yeah, not everyone's gonna buy it. And, uh, I actually do have a story. Truth be told. Um, oh, thank you. Uh. Um. Oh. I guess I have to do it here. Uh. Uh, was it only one image or is it, uh, the entirety? Cause I only, it only opened up one image for me. You know? Oh wait, it's a bunch of links. Okay. I see what happened. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. I'm going to minimize this real quick. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to start one. Oh, why did it? Oh, right. Oh, it's not gonna. Oh, actually, will it? Yes, it will. All right. So, uh, can we get it to come here? Uh, all right. And then we'll put it in order afterwards. So, so I, th I think it is in order. All right, so 2002. Actually, it is in order. 2002, these two fucker came out, right? That's 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 normal. It's tight. It's okay. Sure. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? There's a f there's the December, and then months later, the other version. And then, months later, the sequel. What the fuck? I I'm only going to concentrate on Battle Network, but it's kind of the same ordeal with, with these others. And by the way, this game, this masterpiece came out to quell uh, the, the satate the hunger of the Battle Network fans until the greatest of all time coming out. I'm just saying. But then look at 2004. Bro, it's only been a year. What the fuck, dude? And then look at Zero Two, 2003, 2004, 2002. And what is this? What is this? December? 
February, then November. That just doesn't happen, dude. Oh, and we also got like a DS port. That just doesn't happen, dude. That's crazy. That means that these goddamn games were just shot out. Or shotgunned, as I said. They literally just took a shotgun, just shot on the wall, and we got all of this. We got all of this, bros. That's crazy. That's a lot. Not many, not many series or franchises can say they get this. Capcom, they just shit these things out, and somehow, I mean, they didn't make it work because you know, um, you know, uh, eight years, you know. Oops. Uh, and then only that, but they kind of did the same thing, sort of, with like the other series as well. Like Monster Hunter definitely got this. Th In my opinion, before World. I treated Monster Hunter like Pokemon, like, it was like the same thing. It had like a spice here and there, like with a new mechanic, just like Pokemon, but at the very end of the day, it was the same game. Nothing changed. It was whatever. And then Resident Evil. Yeah, so... Yeah, Capcom's kind of nuts, but... This is why! There is no new Mega Man game as of yet, because you have to basically convince them that, hey, guys, this won't happen again. And they're like, yeah, I need some hard facts, bro. And that's hard to prove when all of this happened. Again, for the fans, fucking goaded. But business-wise, it really did more damage than good, in my opinion. Holy moly. Now let's look at this baby. Actually, why is there a baby here? We'll find out. I'm not saying that we should go back to 2010, where we had too much Mega Man all at once, but a similar release frequency to Street Fighter and its updated editions, and at least half the effort, would probably carry the franchise pretty far. Because people don't buy it enough isn't an excuse if there's no new games to buy. This is also cyclical logic. You can't support a okay. franchise. I am going to talk about, in my opinion, Mega Man's biggest weakness. And that is there are too many games in that franchise. And I don't mean like there's like six battle networks and things like that. No. I mean, like, there's so much division in Mega Man. Like, first you just had a classic, and then you had X, which was manageable. It was fine. It was okay. But now you're like, all right, guys, here's Legends. All right, guys, here's Battle Network. All right, guys, here's Zero. All right, guys, there's uh, Star for All right, guys. I have a brain fart. ZX, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so, in order, so when 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 a person, a casual audience, it's just some dude, comes into this franchise and they look at Mega Man as like, huh, where do I begin? They're gonna look at Mega Man as a whole and be like, where the fuck do I begin? Do these all do all these games have something in common? Are they all linked in some way, shape, or form? Because when they see that amount of games and then that amount of like division, it's like, what do I do? It was so overwhelming. It's like, and not to mention, it created such a division that some people, and I'm guilty of this, but some people just don't give others a shot when they're like they like their own like i'm an ex-boy i'm an ex-guy i'm an ex-guy i can play kind of classic but most importantly i'm an ex-guy so for me personally well i like battle network slightly a little tinge but um but then you have Star Force, and then you have Zero, and then you have ZX, and you have Legend. It's really hard to find somebody, unless they're a hardcore, a hardcore fan, 
because those do exist. But it's like, feasibly speaking, right? How are you going to sell all your games when it's so convoluted? It's so confusing for the casual audience. I have two stories. I'm going to keep them relatively short, but um, I have two experiences. Actually, funnily enough, I have the same type of story from Monster Hunter, but this is a Mega Man video, so I'm going to go with Mega Man. Uh, but I have two situations where I got two of them, or I had an opportunity to introduce them into the Mega Man series. One was a success, and the other was a failure. The successful one is actually a bit of a shorter story. In fact, he's actually in chat right now. He's a success story. It's a raptor claw. So, basically, I was like, yo, bro, go play Mega Man. And he did. It's cool. But! Let me tell you the failure. Um, so, a buddy of mine... He's like he's 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 been playing games. He's been trying to learn some games and whatnot, and uh, he noticed that I all I stream is Battle Network, which well, yeah, that's what I stream, right? And so he asked me, all right, and he gave me the stipulations too. Hey, um, so I'm gonna ask you for a game, and uh, what do you recommend? And he also mentioned that he notices that he watches, like, uh, he, sh he notices that I stream the Battle Network series. So, he told me he would only do one volume, and he's not going to 100% the games. But which one do you recommend for the Battle Network series? Do I go volume one or volume two? Now, we always joke around and talk about how, hmm... How hard would it be to convince somebody to play Mega Man? Well, I can personally tell you at this point, damn, son, it's, it's hard. And to be fair, does, I mostly did it to myself, but he put up a very good point. Like, so he's not going to 100% them. That's fine. Uh, and he's only going to play one volume. Oh, that's fine. So what do I do? Do I tell him to play volume one? Because that is, in a sense, the correct answer. Because Battle Network is a very story-driven game. So, story-driven games, you want to, you know, start with one, two, and three. But there's a major problem with that. One's a giant piece of shit. One fucking sucks. And that's rough, right? That's a really hard sell to start with the first volume and be like, all right, a person is going to play all the games. I want to give them a good impression of the series. Hey, guy, play the first game, uh, the first volume. So I was like, oh, shit, dude. I can't do that. Because I guarantee you with how archaic and awful of a game Battle Network 1 is, He's gonna toss his shit out the fucking window. Cause I kind of know his play style, kind of sort of, or at least his tastes. This ain't it, Chief. But then you ask yourself, well, what about volume two? Cause those games are generally considered good. Shut up. I want to hear shit about number four. But um, those games are generally considered good. But then it's like, Battle Network is a very, very story driven game. Regardless of what you think about number four, you can't just tell somebody to play this story-driven game, but just skip the first half, bro. Hell, I can't even be like, go play the sixth game, because now you're telling them to play the final game of the series. And yes, it's the best one, and it's like the most balanced one, and it's the most playable one, but you're still asking somebody to skip the story, skip the like, skip all these games, because then you're going to wonder, well, what about the other games? Now... I will say, to be fair, if he wanted to play the previous games and he was that curious, he'd probably do it in his own time, but at the very same time, I legitimately was at that standstill to the, it was like, 
what the hell do I tell him? Do I tell him to play volume one? Do I tell him to play volume two? So, I bit the bullet, and I told him the most correct answer of all time. And that was to go play Gravity Circuit. I told him, listen, bro, Battle Network, it's a cool game and all, but I think you'll like Gravity Circuit. Spoiler alert, he did. But yeah, I legitimately could not in good conscience suggest Battle Network. I literally couldn't. I, I, I could not in good faith because me personally, I'm not one to skip. Uh, I'm not one to uh, skip games. Like, you really shouldn't. Although, to be fair, technically speaking, I did start playing i did skip because i never played one until only really recently like my first little playthrough is on youtube it's streamed so uh oops but uh, yeah like, i legitimately couldn't sit there and be like damn bro i don't know what to do so i did the next best thing go play gravity circuit and hey they got another sale, and that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, it's... It's nuts. It's like, I... That's really hard to... That's, that, that's a very tough thing to do. And this, I'm pretty sure this is for, like, almost all the series. Like, every single series, in some way, shape, or form, suffers through this. At least with Battle Network, you really can't tell people to skip those. But at least with the classics and X... Like, yeah, they're not really that super story driven. You can't skip around them, technically speaking. But that's a really hard sell to tell people that, hey, you should start from here. But then you're going to be like, okay, what about this one? Like, wh why shouldn't I play one? Why shouldn't I play two? When you have to convince them that, listen, bro, this game is not that good. You are in a losing battle. And that's why Mega Man is so hard for people to get into. Like, the casual audience just cannot, like, it's a very hard sell. I thought Monster Hunter was a very hard sell prior to World. I thought prior to World, I thought getting people into Monster Hunter was the hardest thing in the world. No, fuck that. Getting people into Mega Man is like the hardest thing of all time. You either hella into it. Or you're just not into it at all. For most people, Mega Man's like that hella hard retro game that I just couldn't get into because I had no patience. Which kind of leads to the survey, but I'll talk to that in a bit. Let's let this video play. If there is literally no way to support it. On the other side of the coin, people say, Mega Man isn't dead. Stop complaining. Just be patient. But tell me, what exactly constitutes a dead franchise? How long do we have to wait with no new substantial releases before we can call it officially dead? The answer is 26 years. If there is no upper limit to how long we can reasonably be expected to wait, then that means we could realistically expect a new Volga sequel just as much as we can for Mega Man. Do you hear yourself? Is it reasonable to expect people to just have infinite patience? No, oh, and uh, I'll save you the Google search. Volgus is the first game Capcom ever made. Um, one? That looks cool. And two? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, it's true. It's like, not everyone has the patience of a saint. Uh, one, uh, you can only wait for so long for something to come up. But um, this is where I kind of get into my biggest critique for him overall. And uh, yeah, it's like, at least as the video portrays, he definitely seems like the character who just really wants a Mega Man game, but doesn't even want to try the other stuff. I mean, like, you heard the the anger and the and the tone he had every time he mentioned Monster Hunter. It's like, 
damn son like there are other games and i'm pretty sure he does play other games i'm not gonna sit and pretend like he doesn't i don't know the guy but at least the, with the way the video was portrayed it's like damn like Mega Man's not everything, dude. Like, you gotta actually kind of open up your your horizons and whatnot. Does it suck that your favorite franchise is not getting a game? Absolutely. Uh, that does suck. A lot. But, you know. I mean, you're kind of putting yourself in that situation of hatred and self-loathing because of the fact that you're just kind of waiting for a Mega Man game. I had previously said that I've lost hope for a Mega Man game to come out, and I've lost hope in Capcom in itself. That, I take back. I have, I officially take that back, because every time I do say that, I still kind of do have that little itsy bitsy semblance of hope. It never left. It is quite small. But I do have, uh, I do have a semblance of hope. I like to think that there will be a Mega Man. And I do, um, I do feel like there will be something. Something will come out eventually, in due time. Also, in order to get somebody to play Final Fantasy, you have to get them to play Mystic Quest. Good luck with that one. Um, so... We're definitely, even though we don't have, like, this long, we, even though we're, we're kind of in that drought of no Mega Man games, at the very same time, Mega Man itself is not dead by any means necessary. So, for me to say, because they're doing something with it. They, they absolutely are. It may not be what you want, but they are doing something with it. So, for me to say that I've lost hope in Capcom, that is incorrect. The proper thing, at least me personally, to say is that I've lost confidence in Capcom. That I will stick to my guns with. And at this very point, I just can't find myself to really be that confident in Capcom providing what I want. And I'll get more into that as I as, as I play, and then I'll, I do have like final thoughts, but do keep that in mind. I may have hope for Capcom, I just don't have that confidence, and that's a very hard sell. Also, uh, I will be shocked if you guys still have hope for Dino Crisis. I know it seems like a dunk, it kind of is, but at the same time, where is it at though? I just wanted to bring up Dino Crisis, but I'm going to keep playing the game. I'm in the video. We've made it known that we want Mega Man for a decade and a half. Capcom can't pretend they haven't heard us. How long do you actually expect us to wait without getting frustrated? We're five years in. If we hit eight years again with only one new release, there's going to be a riot. But do not fret, my dear Mega Man fans. For Legends speaks of a mythical game. All right, listen. Um, one, I like to tease you, Raptor. Two, I would not be a part of that riot. But I can't lie to myself. I would be that guy holding the phone vertically, yelling out World Star. I'm just saying. That has been in the works at Capcom. Over the years, the story of a fabulous game. The legendary Rockman Tyson began to be whispered among the fans. Oh my god, Rockman, Rockman Tyson, Tyson, holy a shit. Game so great that were it released, it would provide so much gameplay that the fans never need fear of running out of enjoyment. Enjoyment. Seeking this Rockman Tyson, hackers snooped from one Capcom server to another with their security breaches. Breaches. Ever hoping that they'll find the Mega Man game they seek just over the horizon. Horizon. Hope. Hope. Despair. 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 Charity. Greed. Greed. Duty. Duty. Power. Ah, oh, you said duty. Who can say what truly motivates the leakers?
After a massive Capcom Giga leak, which apparently revealed many planned Capcom projects, rumor has it that a new Mega Man game has been in development since 2019 called Rockman Tyson. Translated, it roughly comes out to Rockman Match, but not match as in those things you start grills with, but. <laughs> Ah, wait, hold on, you're right! Oh no. Capcom's like, uh, Blackbeard, uh, if you want to find the one. <laughs> no, no, no! Oh god. God, oh god. Um, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I know this is a thing that's mentioned a lot, a lot, right? Like a lot, like a lot. I'm going to be a hundred percent, 110% with you. Actually. Um, it's very unfortunate that they got breached. We cannot deny that there is no denying that by, by any means necessary. Um, so, I mean, I don't think they teased Tyson, right? It was literally just through the, the leaks that we learned through Tyson. I just want to absolutely make sure because I don't, I don't want to like Mandela affect this and be like, no, actually they did talk about Tyson, you know, uh, they did. Yeah. Just remember that one video. They did? Yeah, they did. You're crazy. Um, okay. So I, I just wanted to make sure that it was, it was, it was legit to the leaks. Um, I really can't, I, I can't put any merit into waiting or like even hoping for Tyson because, well, technically speaking, we weren't even supposed to know. Like, and not to mention, COVID happened. Like, I will actually get into that. So, a lot of people have kind of thought and they're like, you know, COVID happened like a while ago, bro. Like, uh, you know, what the fuck? Like, where's their Mega Man game? I think enough time has passed. I think I think it's been enough time. Uh, I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, there's you, you cannot say enough time has passed. We're still feeling the effects of COVID to this very day. Oh, we still have people working from home. You know that, that's still a thing. Like, yes, we're slowly but surely coming in. Uh, to we're slowly but surely coming, getting back to normal. But truth truth be told, we're never gonna be normal. It's just not going to happen. And COVID 100% slowed things down immensely. Like, I I legit would not be surprised if there was actually even going to be a Mega Man game. Like, I, 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 I do believe Tyson would have been a thing, right? Like, th all this talk about, like, how Cap like it's such a hard sell for Capcom. Well, yeah, now you have to convince them over COVID, bro. It was like... Do you see this shit that just happened? Hell no. My ass is going to Resident Evil. Hell, people are still wearing masks to this day. Like, this virus has not gone anywhere. It's still a thing. Hell, I, I even had it not too long ago. So, yeah, it's still a thing, guys. Like, COVID's still happening. May not be, like, super crazy, like, when it first came out and it was awful, but, like, it's still there. And it's still gonna be there. We're still gonna feel these effects for God knows how long. So to kind of be like, oh, COVID's done, or we've uh, we've already like been through this. Yeah, it's like you're still gonna feel it. They're still feeling it to this very day. Not to mention, on top of that, now you have the leaks. You bet your ass that slowed them down hard because they literally. They literally, those, they literally got their pants pulled down. We saw their ass crack. Now they're like embarrassed as fuck and flushed and all this crazy shit. It's like, oh God, oh fuck, oh God, oh fuck, oh God, oh fuck. Yeah, we weren't supposed to know about this stuff. And now our, now our whole timeline and, and thinking is so skewed with almost anything, but really Mega Man. I'm really talking about Mega Man here because it's like, now we're just hoping for a Mega Man game, but it's like, we weren't even supposed to know this. Now the surprise is kind of ruined, so, I mean, like, eventually it'll come out, maybe, possibly, hell, it might even be something completely, I don't know, I, I legit don't know, but, yeah, like, it'll, it'll come out, but, you know, 
Now, I understand not everyone's patient, and I can, uh, I try to be as patient as possible, but I also don't have very much patience, but this really is one of those times where it's like, gotta wait, bro. Let this shit cook, bro. Just enjoy all the monster hunters and Resident Evils and the meat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yes, um, in due time. Really. I'll let him talk about Tyson some more, though. Match as in combat to fight. Various sources from Capcom claim that Rockman Tyson has some pretty massive promises to make good on, such as it will please all kinds of Mega Man fans, or that the game is supposedly going to have a humongous budget, a long term DLC plan to support the game long after launch, and all sorts of other crazy things. The rumor mill also states that apparently, the game was supposed to have come out by now in quarter three of 2022, but the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic reportedly really screwed things up at Capcom, and we all just have to be a little bit more patient. But that was back in 2020. It's three years later, and there still has not been a drop of news regarding this mythical game. And there still won't be. That's just a fact. It's, it just takes a lot longer. You know? Hell, we were supposed to learn about Wilds, like, a little while ago, but... Now we learned about it through freaking Jeff Keighley. And that was not too long ago. And hell, that game ain't even coming out till next year. So... I can't imagine how long Tyson will be revealed. Although, I will say... Tell a bold to think that you're going to get everyone, but hey, hey, I'm going to have the confidence, but I like to be proven wrong. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Um, uh, yeah, like, just like John said, you have to wait. It's not, it's not a matter of fact of like, oh, you want to wait. No, you kind of have to now. Some shit happened. Shit that we didn't even see coming. Well, maybe some did, but. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's gonna be a hot minute until we even hear these things, but let's continue. For all we know, I think it's Vaporware, so. destined to never actually release, or perhaps it has been quietly cancelled, like the third Mega Man ZX game, or Star Force 4 were back in 2010, and we were never supposed to actually find out. Okay, I, the case is, I, we are now. I will say, I'm not a Capcom employee by any means necessary, okay? But, I don't think they'd cancel it. I'll be that bold. I don't think they would. But, like, that, that, that is like, oh, like, cause, cause it's like, it's basically kind of saying that they have the same mentality as they had those years ago. Where it's like, they really don't, and the numbers do show, the sales do show there, and the fat and the and the effort that they're putting through, even though it's not what we want, it's still something at the end of the day. It's still in their minds, and maybe they actually hell if anything they might we don't even know they might just be the biggest fans of all time, and hell they might even be bigger fans than us, and we just don't know it. Okay, they might be like, they they might have to be they might have to temper their 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 mode. Keep, keep the power levels in check type of stuff, right? I don't know. I'm, that's just a joke. But, yeah, like, I truly do feel like um, it's just, just you, you legitimately just have to wait. That's just the end of it, unfortunately. And I I will say in confidence, I don't think the game's cancelled by any means necessary. Would it be silly to cancel it? Sure, but and I'll also entertain the fact, maybe even play devil's advocate, if you call it that, I don't know. Um, maybe it is canceled, and maybe they didn't see that, but I think, personally speaking, that's like a 1%. I am on the camp of, it's still in the works, we're just not going to hear it for a very long time. So, uh, uh, keep doing posting, I guess. Nothing. Just like 
In the 13 years since the great Mega Man drought of the 2010s, it would seem that Capcom has learned nothing. Forgive the metaphor, but at this <coughs> point, being a loyal Mega Man fan is a lot like being in an abusive relationship. Cap <laughs> That's a horrible thing to laugh at, but oh my god, have we reached abusive relationship levels, bro? No way. Like, okay, I go back to the analogy of the temperature where it's 85 degrees, but it feels like 100. Okay, sure, it might feel that way. Maybe if we really stretch it, but no, dude. <laughs> we're... Oh my god, we're not gonna. Oh Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, oh my god, that's a funny line. That's a that's a funny ass line. I'm like, listen again. I get it. I really do. But... I don't think it's that bad. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna put it out there. I just don't think it's that bad. It's a shitty feeling. I ain't gonna... I ain't gonna... I mean... If I had to really put it in perspective... I feel like... Maybe it's on the same levels of, like, you stepped on poop barefoot. Or you stepped on the Lego. Maybe two Legos, but that might be pushing it. Um, or, I don't know, it's just... Maybe they run out of Sunny D at the supermarket and you gotta wait a week or so. I don't know, but... I'm not gonna... Now, listen. I get it. I understand that you want to make it seem like it's a really bad thing, which it is, I guess, but I don't think you want to put not getting a game for many years on the same level of catching hands from a guy who, uh is not happy with you at the moment. That's, uh... Yeah. Maybe you can make the argument... And I'm not even saying you should make the argument, but if anything was going to have that sort of arg... Actually, I can't even say it. I was gonna clown on Dino Crisis again, but I can't even say that either. It's just too absurd, man! This is, it's, oh, gee, that's just weird. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, like, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna just let them keep going. Capcom deprives us of the things that we need. They say that they're sorry, and then give us a small taste to keep us coming back. And then they go right back to neglecting us. For almost a decade and a half, Capcom has been drip-feeding us trickles, fractions, particles of Mega Man content and merchandise, as if to keep the fan base on life support, but refuses to either pull the plug and officially announce Mega Man's retirement, or to just finally give us what we've been asking for. It's an incredibly frustrating state to be in, especially as we have seen the successful revival of other Capcom properties, such as Devil May Cry, and the continued pampering of franchises like Street Fighter, Resident Evil, and Monster Hunter. Kurt, like, kind of refreshed my memory. When did Mega Man 11 come out? And then when did Devil May Cry 5 come out? Remind me. I mean, I know when 11 came out, but when did Devil May Cry 5 came out? Or when was it, like, I guess announced, if that makes sense? Same here. Okay. I, 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 wanted, to, I wanted to make sure. I wanted, I wanted to absolutely make sure. Um, Like... I mean, oh, 2019? 
relatively around the same. It, it, the point is that it's relatively around the same. Like, like, like come on now. Like, uh, again, personally speaking, classic's not my cup of tea. But hey, something happened. It was cool. It was great. I liked it. It's neato. It's neato. I'm just saying. But it's you really can't because Devil May Cry is kind of on that same boat. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think they were like a place below. I'm not gonna pull up the tweet because I recorded it on full screen that. But um, yeah, it's like um they're kind of on the same boat. And yeah, I don't hear the shit from Devil May Cry by any means necessary. By the way, um. Oh, maybe I do. I don't know. It's just... Yeah, okay, it is number five. Um... <sighs> also, I love Nebula Joy. They're my favorite company of all time. Teehee, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's like... I guess he's making it seem like... I, I'm pretty sure you've seen the meme of like the, the person in the pool holding up the baby... And then there's like a drowning baby, and then there's like, uh, and then there's like the skeleton on the, on the on like the bottom of the ocean. He's making it seem like Mega Man is a skeleton on the bottom of the ocean, when at worst the baby is either drowning or it like fell off the the floating tuba, and that's as bad as it, it that realistically speaking. Mega Man, at the very worst, is a is the drowning baby, at worst. But on the caveat that it's wearing floaties, so it's not really drowning, but it seems like it's drowning. And unfortunately, Dino Crisis is in the abyss of the ocean. I'm sorry, I, I had to do it. I had to say it, bro. I had to say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing this video. And I'll get something one day, I promise. No, the skeleton is Darkstalkers. If you're not a fan of those three game franchises, you're basically out of luck. Hell, we've even seen a creation of a brand new Capcom IP in the form of Exoprimal a sometimes PvP, sometimes PvE wave-based shooter in the same vein as D. I I love your Raptor. <laughs> All this and more is coming out of Capcom, but never Mega Man. A franchise integral to making Capcom the success that it enjoys today. We've been told over and over and over to speak with our wallets, to somehow show... Okay, so before he gets to this point, though, um, I do want to uh, kind of talk about a little bit about exoprimal um okay could you give the argument of hey maybe we could have put a Mega Man game instead of say exoprimal maybe you could probably make an argument i wouldn't because like i said right if i were to use the logic Hey, you do what you got to do. Uh, have, uh, I'm glad you stuck around for as long as you did it. Uh, and I'm going to upload this later on, so you'll be able to see it anyways. Um, you have a wonderful night. Um, and I'll probably host you afterwards anyways. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, like... You have a better time, an easier time, selling something new, which is Exoprimal, and from what I'm hearing, it's doing okay. I don't know the full numbers, nor am I that interested. But, I mean, it's just kind of there. It's just there. But, even so, you will have a much easier time convincing them to make something new with this new idea because... New ideas are a risk. And by the way, if you wanted to play the risk card, there's the risk right there. They took the risk with Exoprimal. They would rather take the risk with Exoprimal than do a risk with Mega Man. If we were to use that logic. But at the very same time, I do feel like um, 
they are still in that cooking phase of Mega Man. And it'll happen in, in, in due time. But right now, they kind of want to get their bearings. They kind of want to... They obviously don't want to sell what they know sells, which is Street Fighter, Look at Street Fighter 6, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4 killing it, and then Monster Hunter. I cannot wait for Wilds. And then not to mention, uh, World had that giant resurgence that actually did numbers, which is kind of insane to me. And now I'm seeing nothing but uh, people trying to deathless uh, Monster Hunter. Which is nuts, by the way. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the, the fact of the matter is those are what sell. Mega Man doesn't sell like it... I mean, I mean, actually, truth be told, I don't think Mega Man sold very well to begin with. It sold well enough, but now, nowadays, good enough is not good enough um and yes that is true people voted with our wallets um just because it's not a new game that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not supporting Mega Man anytime they bring out this new drip this new figures like just anything Mega Man in general that is a little bit towards Mega Man may not be as much as we'd like to think but it is at the very least excuse me something it's it's kind of insane that Mega Man, even though it's not at, at its like former glory like it used to be, it's still in a better state than it is now than what we actually truly think. Because again, I hate to actually you know what I'm done clowning on Dino Crisis for now, but it could be worse. You could be dog stalkers and just have nothing or very little. And that's sad. But, you know. I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be, you know, a little hopeful. But I'll keep going. Calm what we want. I'm sorry, but I think we've more than done that already. The entire online Mega Man community has been singing in unison like a chorus that we are dying for more mainline Mega Man games. We made Mega Man 11 one of the most successful Mega Man games of all time. We made the Battle Network Legacy Collection one of the most successful games of all time. I even think the other Legacy... Where's my Senko figure, goddammit? That's what I want. ...collections collectively sold better than the games included in them at the time of release. I don't have the figures in front of me, but that sounds correct. Mega Man X Dive is not only one of the most beloved Mega Man games of all time, it is also one of the most well-received mobile gacha games of all time. I'm just saying... It gave me Lair. Three of them. I'm happy. Look at them. Look at them. Period. And while I don't oh, and I like ours too. have the sales figures in front of me, I've seen the rates for some of those premium packages. X-Dive absolutely made Capcom a lot of money. May I remind you, at one point, Mega Man or Rockman X-Dive had the, uh, had a, a, a package where you can buy enough gems to spark for like 300-ish dollars. That was a funny time, but, uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to bring out that fun fact. So what further actions does Capcom want to see? What the hell else is there left to do? I personally have participated in at least two mail-in letter campaigns and was part of the mob that surrounded Seth Killian with the rest of the Get Me Off the Moon supporters and a New York City convention some number of years ago. And those were just for bringing back Legends 3. There is no way Capcom is ignorant to the demands of their oh, popular, by the way. popular Mega Guess Man series. We've been saying for years that we want new Mega Man entries. We got lucky and managed to get Mega Man 11. But we've also been begging Capcom for a Mega Man X9 since 2004. 
and Legends fans have been begging for Legends 3 to become a reality since 2000, and again in 2011 when the project was scrapped. I really have no idea what more we can do, how we can be more clear, or how we can make our wishes known to Capcom. I think and I will then, I will definitely say something here. Um, this is where my critique of, uh, this is where I wish Capcom was a bit more vocal. And this is where I wish Capcom did, wasn't too safe. I wish they did say something more. Like, it, it is, it, like, I, I can't deny, it is quite disheartening. It is quite sad to be this vocal and then just hear, like, nothing. But, truth be told, you don't deserve anything. It's a very harsh thing to say, but at the very end of the day, Capcom does not have to tell you jack shit. I can only say that they should be more vocal and maybe say something here and there, or maybe acknowledge uh, when certain dates come around. But the unfortunate truth is that they really don't have to say a goddamn thing to us. And I guess so in, in some sense, they kind of took that route. And is it a bad look? Well, yeah, it is. But um, at the very same time, I really do think it is the game of patience. It is the game of um, how patient are you to be getting what you like? How long are you willing to wait? And I'm going to be fair for those who have stuck around or as long as you did. God damn, you guys are troopers. I'm kind of there, kind of, but I'll get more time in a bit, but, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did jump ship, you know, they're like, yeah, fuck this. I'm tired of waiting. I'm just gonna, if something comes along, I'll be back. But otherwise I'm, uh, I'm gonna go play something else or do something else. I think we as a fan base are desperate for literally any sort of acknowledgement of our desires. If a new game isn't a possibility, then at least tell us that. Please stop teasing us and jerking us around. Just say that our voices have been heard and we know that this wasn't all in vain. At this point, I may have lost some people watching who think that the Mega Man community is just complaining too much, that maybe we are not entitled to any sort of games no matter how much we ask for it. Capcom doesn't necessarily owe us anything, except I think they do. If fans stop supporting Capcom, their income dries up and they go out of business. In a uh, I don't know. Resident Evil got something to say. So does Monster Hunter, Street Fighter. I'm just saying. Way they are reliant on our support. This is a basic fundamental aspect of supply and demand. There is a very loud and clear demand for Mega Man but there is a very desperate lack of supply. I mean no disrespect to the team behind Exoprimal, as I have played that game and thoroughly enjoyed it. But can anybody explain to me how that game, a brand new IP with a ridiculous premise and gameplay that, as far as I can tell, is not in high demand, managed to get a new game developed and released before a new Mega Man game did? Oh, but Capcom doesn't- Again. You have a hell of a lot of a better time to convince someone to something new than to even continue with uh, Mega Man. And uh, I was going to say something, but I, actually, I think he's going to say it a bit, so let me let him play. Need the support of Mega Man. They make enough money on Street Fighter, Resident Evil, and Monster Hunter. Fair enough. True. Counterpoint. Capcom could make even more money 
if they provided the supply to the Mega Man demand. Make True! That's why they're bringing up figures! Making money is the primary objective of every company or corporation, no matter what. I mean, if you really look at it, right? I'm not going to stay here and pretend that I know how much making a game costs. I'm, I'm just not even going to entertain that idea. But I guarantee you, the profit margins to making a game is way lower, assuming the game is average, than, say, putting some plastic together to create a cool figure. I'm pretty sure you'll sell more of that than the game. Again, unless the game is, like, that much gas. But, um... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's like... You know... Yeah, exactly, it's like... Mega Man... You, you just have to, like... You, you have to admit it. Like, Mega Man is not in this giant pedestal you put it in. That's where Resident Evil and Street Fighter and Monster Hunter, most, especially Street Fighter, because, yeah, they have a Capcom Cup. They have tournaments. Some mad lad put a new Chun-Li mod in their weeklies, but, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't blame you, Eric. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I legit don't blame me, but I've watched this video like three times, four times at this point, so um, you're definitely getting your money's worth a uh, replied. <laughs> what their Twitter PR guy tries to fool you into thinking. We want to give you our money, Capcom. Why won't you give us the goods we're asking for? There's your Donna by the way. For in exchange for it. The mythical Rockman Tyson made these extraordinary promises, if the rumors are to be believed. But Capcom doesn't even have to make it that hard for themselves. It's expected to be one of Capcom's- You're right, they don't have to make it that hard for themselves. That's why they just stick with what sells. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's, it's just true. Like, it is, it is an unfortunate reality that as a Mega Man fan, you have to live with. Like, yeah, your other, the other franchises are gonna do, get so much more attention. Cause that's just the truth of it. But I also am not gonna put uh, Mega Man under the dead category either. Best selling games? It has to release first for that to happen. Tyson claims it will make fans of all kinds happy. How? I'll, if that game ever comes out, I'll say when I believe it. I don't believe it. How about you focus on the two most successful subseries fans first? Out of Mega Man Classic, X, Zero, ZX, and Legends, three of them have concluded stories or are low-priority games in terms of popularity and overall sales figures. Mega Man Zero has- Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Guys, hear me out. Don't leave the video, okay? I have the solution. Hear me out. When it comes to Zero, ZX, and Legends, the sequels, tournament arcs and maybe split them into two versions one of them being like a solar-esque type version and then the other one being a lunar type version <laughs> that'll it'll sell numbers bro i promise <laughs> Mega Man ZX has a cryptic hidden ending, but ultimately could be left where it is. Can't be the Hihachi for the tournament arc? Problem solved, bro. And for Mega Man Legends, the same thing applies. We would all scream with joy for Legends 3 to finally come back in some form, but if it never does, we at least have a bittersweet ending that lets you know that Volnut's adventures will continue even if we never get to see them. He's building the Volnut Dome, bro, for that tournament. He's building that, that dome for the tournament, bro. Trust, big trust. My uncle at Nintendo Capcom... Sega told me. I'm not here to sell my Zero ZX and Legends fans short. I want Legends 3 to happen more than anything. But realistically speaking, 
let's set aside our ideal games and focus on what is likely to actually happen within our lifetimes. That leaves Mega Man Classic and the X series, which, luckily for Capcom, are also their two most successful series for Mega Man. Alright, I'm gonna, I, I think he does mention it afterwards, but where the fuck's Battle Network, bro? And we don't even talk about Star Force, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but I, this is where I, I do agree, right? Um, there's so much division and I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even going to count, uh, I'm not even going to count like the, the games that have en endings to the stories because you can literally do whatever you want, really. Um, but, but you cannot disagree that at least in terms of popularity, especially classic, that's where it's at. I mean, hey, look, what did they look at all the other games they made? They made Mega Man 9, Mega Man 10, Mega Man 11, every, and this is the thing that really irks me with Capcom, but I cannot blame them by any means necessary. Anytime it comes to making a Mega Man game, um, they, they, they do resort to X, I mean, classic and then X. The only difference is with X, they kind of turn into a gotcha game, which is, it, it's, it's a smart move, but because like mobile games are the thing, right? It's just unfortunate that they, um, yeah, we don't talk about that, but, but it is true. Like they exist for a reason because those are the ones that sold the most. Those are the ones that, I mean, for fuck's sake, Mega Man 2 was like one of the highest selling for God knows how long. And then. It got thrown a few times, but yeah, exactly. And, um, Battle Network, I'm not going to sit there and say, like, oh, they have a chance, but the collection did sell quite a bit. They still might have to sell a few more, but it sold a bit. I think it is kind of safe to say that Battle Network does, there, there is something there for Battle Network. We just don't know what, if there even is going to be something, but, but it's there. Because let's not forget, let us not forget, Rockman X Dive may have been an X primary game, and it may have ended in a giant ugly fart, aka dive armors. But which was the Mega Man, the only other Mega Man to come out of there with an armor? That's right. Little Hub Hikari is the one who got that dive armor. None of the other Mega Man's got it. That's that is kind of stretching it. I'll be I'll admit. But that did happen. If for some reason Capcom is having a hard time choosing between the two, might I suggest they just alternate? We already got Mega Man 11. Why not give us Mega Man X9 next? Rumor has it. X9 was almost put into development, but stopped during the planning phases and focus shifted to Maverick Hunter X, the Mega Man X1 remake for the PlayStation Portable from 2005. People have been clamoring for a resolution to X8's cliffhanger for almost 20 years. With Mega Man Classic, each game... Guys, I'm gonna be honest. I forgot X8 ended at a cliffhanger. Is that bad? Damn, bro. <laughs> More or less has a self-contained story, and so the time between releases doesn't really sting as much since there's no pressure to see the story resolved in the next entry. And this dichotomy of Classic and X is actually perfect for Mega Man. There is always going to be a group of fans who loved the cartoony, wholesome, more innocent side of Mega Man. And for them, Classic is a perfect fit. You can absolutely have a teensy bit more edge as seen in Mega Man 11, which did a wonderful job of modernizing the designs and characters, but it also managed to retain its cuteness factor, which is a very important element in Classic Mega Man. But the- All right, I do wanna talk about one thing though. He doesn't mention it in this video, because it wasn't out at the time, but the survey, the survey came out. I don't know if you guys did it, but there was a survey, a Capcom survey. And number one, it was a very cheeky survey. 
these motherfuckers knew exactly what they were saying because they're like, hey guys, what's wrong with us? And they knew. They hit they hit the goddamn issues on the nail every time. They know. They know. They know. But I will say I did get very irked. I got kind of and this is definitely a personal thing right this is 100 a personal thing for me this is how i personally feel but i don't expect everyone else to feel the same way in fact i don't even expect people to agree with me to be honest with you but we all saw the the remakes part or like what game would you like to be remade and you know you saw your uh original trilogy for um phoenix right Dark Socks, I believe, was there as well. But of course, the thing that all of us 100% saw was classic Mega Man 1, 2, and 3. Now, he, he does address the remakes here, but not, 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 in the serv not in the survey aspect. But personally speaking, it absolutely irks me that they... Like, it's one thing to mention Mega Man, but it's another thing to specifically mention classic Mega Man. Because you can say the same thing for X, mostly just X, but uh, it sucks that they're resorting to classic. But I get it. I absolutely get it. And even though I don't like it, and, and truth be told, I didn't pick it. Because I really don't want to see that. But I will give credit where credit is due. Yes, there do exist the classic remake. It does exist. However, and this is not necessarily saying that we're going to get the same treatment. But, I picked Phoenix Wright, by the way. Um, but, I will say this. When it comes to remaking things now, Capcom is killing it. Look at Resident Evil. Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 were remade. Outright remade. When we first saw 2, we were scared shitless. Because a lot of people like OG Resident Evil 2. A lot. And then when Remake came out, it was, it was a fucking good game. It was so good. We're like, holy shit. Now, there are issues with the, with the Remake. Compared to the OG. There are some things that didn't come through. There are some things that are quite different. But at the very end of the day. At the end of the day. That remake. Was fucking great. I can't say the same for 3. But it was still a good remake. It was just. You know. Uh, lacking. But then 4. Remake. Mwah, chef's kiss. That shit's fucking fire. So, with that said, I'm not here saying that we're going to see a real lifelike Mega Man running around in Raccoon City like Leon did. But I will at the very least say, I do believe that if they were going to remake the game now, it's going to get one hell of a fucking treatment. Like, a really good remake. And so, if it does happen, I do have hope for it being actually very nostalgic, but different at the same time. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. If they actually do remake the first game, I'm pretty sure most people will be very happy. But I do feel like uh, when it comes to making the classic remakes, if they kind of treat it sort of the same way as they did with the Resident Evil remakes, I think they got something going there. And I, I do, I do have, uh, 
confidence and that aspect that they'll actually do well. So I'll give them that. I may not want it. I may not absolutely want it, but that is definitely something that I can't see happening. Credit where credit is due. There you go. The X series also shows incredible potential for what a more mature Mega Man franchise could be. That is precisely what the mission statement of the X series was from the very beginning. This was not just Mega Man, it was Mega Man in the future. To be perfectly fair, let's not for let's not forget that when Mega Man X first came out, we all thought it was Mega Man 10. We didn't realize it was a whole new thing. I'm just saying. But um yeah, I agree. These games could also use a really nice cool remake like that, but uh I'm not holding my breath for that. I if it does happen, it'll definitely be way down the line, but I'm not holding my breath on that. But I think we'll see classics before we even remotely see anything X, so I'll leave it at that. An edgier, more mature story for a slightly older audience. It tells deeper stories with interconnected plots and characters and mature themes with enough subtext and lore to keep people hooked on the plot developments as much as they were with the gameplay. I would even dare to say that a large majority of the Zero series fan base would find a comfortable home in the X series if the same love and attention to detail was afforded to the X series as was the Mega Man Zero games. Despite what some may think, both of these franchises are not that dissimilar. Hey. Actually. Hey. 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 We don't live in that time anymore. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. But it, but knowing them, they would absolutely reference that stuff. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, well. Actually, I don't know. Uh, in fact, I'll kind of rewind it, but I, I think he's more saying that... Um, I'll rewind it a little bit. I think he's more saying that for those people who are into the X series, they could be into the Zero series. But I'm going to rewind a bit, and then I'll let you hear it. Man Zero games. Despite what some may think, both of these franchises are not that dissimilar and actually cover a lot of the same ground thematically. Even the gameplay of Zero is fundamentally just expanded from what the PS1 era X games established. The only difference is that the Zero series spends a lot of time developing the story, while the X series focuses more on a plot that is mostly secondary to the gameplay. And Zero fucking dies! But I see no reason why you could not manage to have a healthy, equal balance of both. The X series is ripe with plot, lore, social commentary, and world building, on par, if not exceeding that, of the Zero series. But because it never gets capitalized on, the X in Mega Man X is more associated with wasted potential, despite having infinite to work with. Dude, I told you, he comes back in the tournament arc. Relax. So right there, you have classic fans satisfied if you simply release a new classic game now and then, and you have X and Zero fans satisfied by borrowing some of the appeal of the Zero series and merging it with the tried and true appeal of the X series. That's three out of your five primary Mega Man subseries taken care of. And that's to say nothing of potential side games within each series. For some reason, Capcom seems to think that the only thing we want are numbered sequels to each game. But do you have any idea how many years have gone by that I've heard people asking for a Devil May Cry style action game set in the Mega Man Zero series? Here comes the Unity games! Or even a Dynasty Warrior style crossover Mega Man game with heroes and villains from across the entire franchise? And I know that Capcom can absolutely make it happen because they developed Sengoku Basara, an excellent crowdfighting beat-em-up in the style of Dynasty Warriors. They wouldn't even have to develop a new engine for it because they already made it for Sengoku Basara. You could- Okay, listen. One, I like how he grabbed this person's videos where they like showcase like really cool epic scripted scenes of like weapon usage and things like that, number one. But secondly, 
Um, listen. Oh god, I forgot what I was gonna say. I'll let this play out. Make a oh, now I remember. Okay, listen. A Mega Man Muso would be pretty good. I think it would be. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be absolutely honest with you. Hyrule Warriors ruined it for me. Not because Hyrule Warriors is bad. In fact, Hyrule Warriors is great. If you haven't played that game, you should. But unfortunately, obviously not counting Dynasty Warriors because it's, well, Dynasty Warriors. Um, Hyrule Warriors kind of set the bar for me where I think, oh man, that would be really fucking cool. And then like, Fire Emblem Warriors happened. So, yeah, um... You win some, you lose some. Monster Hunter-style game set in the Legend series, where you and a team of diggers track down and defeat massive reaver bots and plunder dungeons. Yeah! All of these are just a few ideas off of the top of my head that would require little to no effort for Capcom to adapt from existing games that they already own. I will say this, um... I get where he's coming at, where it could be, um... It could be... Yeah, you can probably expand on some ideas, maybe kind of mingle some ideas here and there, but I kind of feel like... Uh, hopefully I'm using this correctly... It kind of feels like this is like a bit Mega Man pilled, where it's like, you're still thinking with the mentality of uh, the person being a Mega Man fan. Obviously, a Mega Man fan would enjoy it, but you really have to ask yourself the most important question. Would a non-Mega Man fan get into it? That's the bigger question. And that's why they shoot, that's why they always go to uh, Classic. And that's why I also ha that's why I also feel like Classic would be a game that people like if they were to make the Classic remake and give it that, that uh that Resident Evil uh feel to it or like the remake feel to it that's why I feel like it would be such a good idea because they now know that Mega Man I mean they've probably known this for years now is that Mega Man is a very hard game to get into hell I just told you two stories where I had a chance to get someone into it, and they did, and then got another chance to get someone into it, and then made him play Gravity Circuit instead. But play the game, by the way. Um, but yeah, at the very end of the day, you have to, you can't just include Mega Man fans anymore. It's not just about that, because I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, Mega Man fans, you might think there's a lot, but there's not. There really isn't a lot. But you know what there is a lot of? Casuals. There's so many normies out there. It's not even funny. So if you can get their attention, if you can get their money, then maybe perhaps sure. Um that's funny. By the way, that's funny. <laughs> um but it's like, yeah, you you have you're gonna have a very hard time getting someone into uh oh uh, yeah, also without gotcha, you know. Uh unfortunately you can't just have a Mega Man game and then put Subway Surfer below while having a family guy clip like playing in the background. It, you just can't. You have to somehow design the game to not just incorporate Mega Man fans, but you also have to incorporate, you know, newcomers. Because, I mean, that's how you're going to make the money. And should should they do that and succeed, well, that's how they're going to get the numbers like Resident Evil's getting. But And I'm not even saying that Resident Evil re the Resident Evil remakes uh, did that, per se. It may have done that for a lot, but I, I, I don't have the numbers. I'm not even going to pretend to entertain that idea. But I'll tell you one thing. Playing Resident Evil 2 Remake is so much easier to play than Resident Evil, o the Resident Evil 2 OG. Not to say that I think it's a bad game. I don't think that at all. But it's just like, you have a much easier time getting someone into the remake than to the OG. And that's what Mega Man's really at right now. Right now, getting people into your series 
is a very hard thing. But if Capcom somehow manages to figure out the way where not just everybody can do that, not, not just not just Mega Man fans, but everyone else can do that, that would be fantastic. And you know what? I have full confidence that uh, that uh, Capcom can do this because they've done this already. That game is called Monster Hunter World. That game bridged the fan, the Monster Hunter fans, with the people who didn't even know about Monster Hunter. And look, that's like one of the most successful Monster Hunter games of all time. It's phenomenal. They somehow managed to get the casuals and the experts together to mingle. And I do think Capcom can do it. So, I'll let the video play a bit. These are concepts for Mega Man games that I am confident would be successful, and they all make use of things Capcom already has in their possession. I That's true. Street Fighter VI is that. also Mega Man uh, Battle Network thing. is experiencing a resurgence in popularity thanks to the Legacy Collection. Nobody would be mad if you somehow made another one of those. It was by far the most successful Mega Man subseries in decades. The mass appeal of Battle Network is palpable. How have they not made a competitive online net battling game yet? I mean, sure, the Legacy Collection has online PvP for now, but I'm <laughs> talking about a proper, overhauled game dedicated to matches. I promise you, Capcom, nobody would be mad if you simply made a side game that took place adjacent to an existing game. Okay, I laughed, but I have to be fair. I have to be absolutely fair. At least with the classic collection. I mean, sorry, the, the Battle Never collection. They, they did try. They didn't get it like they wanted to. But they did try. Like, the Legacy Collection was definitely that collection where they they actually did attempt, right? Like, they didn't just slap their games onto a collection and then just sold that or, like, put some art or whatever other bullshit they, they did with the other collections. They didn't just do that. They actually put in effort and, like, okay, we're going to bring the Japanese versions, you know, um... And they did try with PvP. They they did try with the networking. They tried. Maybe it wasn't a complete success, but thankfully there is a very cool uh, way of doing that. And, uh, you know, Capcom, uh, don't worry about it, but they're playing your game. Don't worry, bro. It's okay. But uh, all jokes aside, like, it is, like, yeah, they absolutely positively, I didn't want to say the name, uh, they absolutely positively, uh, they did try. But, I mean, as we know, when it comes to the Japanese and net codes, yeah. In the timeline. Or even if it simply made no sense at all and was a wacky crossover game like a Mega Man Battle and Chase 2 in the same vein as Mario Kart 8, which features many crossover characters and tracks. How about surprising everyone with Rock Board 2 and making a fantastic Mega Man party game that celebrates the history of the franchise? Breath of the Wild has set a new standard in open world exploration, and yet, when I was watching the trailers as it was announced, I couldn't help but feel that I had already seen this style of gameplay in a 3D action game before, and I had, in Mega Man Legends 3. Much like in 1997, Mega Man Legends actually beat Ocarina of Time to the punch by releasing first, and did many of the same things that game did, arguably better in some cases, despite what Zelda obsessives will argue. So Here's the thing. Just because you did it first that doesn't mean you did it right and that's kind of what happened here 
like um I don't know if we're gonna count sixty four maybe it's two different things I'm not entirely sure, but um or mars sixty four man but if we're gonna talk about legends doing it first over uh ocarina of time sure you have that title that that's fine and dandy but regardless of what you think about ocarina of time ocarina of time killed it they absolutely killed it okay we are counting mars 64 yeah mars 64 fucking did it first what are you talking about bro um but yeah it's like they did it better, and that's why they're more well known. That's why more people know Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. Uh, I'm sorry, Super Mario 64, Legend of Zelda. Again, I love Mega Man too. Don't get me wrong, but like, I guess I'm a prime example of just me not giving a shit about Legends. Like, Legends may have done it, but I mean, I more remember. Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 over Mega Man Legends. I'm sorry to say, but uh, yeah, they did it better and they did it more memorable. And um, yeah, this is the end of it, unfortunately. Uh, but I mean, maybe they could have done it better, the three, but again, three or just Mega Man in general was at that point where it's like, yeah, we're kind of done. Just shitting games out. We're we're gonna close all these, and it's sad, but that is what happened. So, color me shocked when I saw Barrett running around a massive island, sprinting up walls, riding around on a hover bike, collecting serve bots, and showcasing an amazing freedom of movement that I had not seen before in a video game of that type. It's not too late, Capcom. Nintendo has shown you what you could have had with Legends Three open world action games are reaching their pinnacle. If you ever wanted to break into that market now, with a familiar and recognizable IP attached to it, now is the time to revive Mega Man Legends. You nearly had Mega Man Maker with Mega Man Universe. Nintendo showed you up again with Mario Maker, giving us a glimpse of- Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. Every time I heard of Mega Man Universe, I did not know it was like a Mega Man Maker S game. I just, I just saw the design. And I'm like, this is like the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, and just glossed over it. Oops. Of what could have been, and now the fans have taken it upon themselves to fully realize the game we almost got with a literal Mega Man Maker fan game, which enjoys massive success and is beloved by the community. That. Huh. Should I bring this back? Or at least play it a bit? Because I did play Slot this. Is recovery drop. Cool, thank you. It's been a very hot minute since I even touched Mega Man Maker. But, um... I mean, Mega Man Maker's a great game. Like, we, we played it. I mean, it's, it's like Mario Maker at the end of the day, right? It's like, but Mega Man... Um, uh, just, you know, um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, it's definitely something I can do. It's definitely something I can also, uh, do like later. Yeah, I'm gonna Eric. Oh God. I feel so bad for people who have to sit there and watch this video, bro. <laughs> but I'm going to upload the whole thing later and you guys will be able to watch in your own time. So at least I'll make your work shift pretty cool. I guess if you want to, you know, do that, but yeah, have a good night. Could have been yours. You have a clear starting point with Classic and X being the two most glaringly obvious. Also, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna leave this part for like towards the end, but I definitely do have something to say about fan games and like spiritual successors. To make a new game for. And if you actually gave either of them the same love and care you give to Monster Hunter, Resident Evil, or Street Fighter, you would have success with Mega Man not seen since the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. The numbers, Jack! Branch out slowly. You cannot go wrong. 
It is literally impossible to fail when all we want is a new Mega Man game of any kind. There are endless possibilities you could apply to the Mega Man franchise, but you have to actually do it. You cannot make profitable Mega Man games if you never make Mega Man games in the first place. You need to stop speculating on whether or not Mega Man is profitable, desired, or recognized as a successful property. We have all... I mean, it's hard to say whether or not uh, Mega Man is profitable, because, well, that, that, that 2000s did such a number. Although they do have things like Dive and the figures and Mega Man 11, so... They probably know. I mean, they, actually, what did they say? They do know. It's just, you know, they have to find that balance. They have to find that, that, they have to find that winning formula. And with Mega Man, that's a really hard thing to do, considering at its, what state it's, it's at and has been. I'll proven it to you over and over and over again. We have not just spoken with our wallets, we have shouted with them. Me and countless others have made entire YouTube channels and Twitter accounts dedicated to singing the praises of our favorite franchise. I absolutely Does it agree. All fall on deaf ears. Mega Man is the franchise with an ever expanding fan base, but no games to match it. Yeah, I I cannot agree even remotely. Uh if anything, Mega Man is like one of the hardest games to get. I like for many years I thought it was Monster Hunter. I, I'm just I I I just think it's Mega Man. At this point, I truly do believe that Mega Man is like the hardest thing to get into. It just is. Like I I don't see I mean there might be some other things that are harder to get into, but to uh, play up a meme and uh, kind of uh, be funny, um, I think you'll have a easier time getting people to play Dark Souls than to play Mega Man. Probably. Maybe. New fans are constantly joining the fold. I greet them on an almost daily basis, and they thank me for introducing them to Mega Man. And then I watch them slowly bleed away because they see that sticking around will not pay off, and everything that there is to see exists in the decades prior. Pick a game and make it. It's that easy. There is no wrong answer. Can somebody tell me when Mega Man X came out? I'm having a hard time remembering. We've inserted our coins. We've told you loud and clear that we want to play, but you have to push start. So where does that leave us now? Hey, Coleman. Thank you. I was two years old, bro. <laughs> Do you really think it's it's uh it's a really hard sell, man? Like, and that's the thing too. It's like a lot of the fans are old, bro. Like we are old farts, bro. I mean, maybe not that old, but we're old. Try to try to get a, a youngin to play these games. It's it's hard. You can do it, but it's hard. Well, to be honest, I don't know. For all the shouting and yelling I'm doing, I'm not actually sure that any of it even matters. When Mega Man Legends 3 was cancelled, it broke me in a way that I've never recovered from. I don't really get hyped for games anymore. I don't get excited. I don't vibrate with anticipation like I used to. They don't become my soul. Dudes, I'm turning 33 in a few weeks, man. <laughs> Focus from the time of announcement to the time of release. Mega Man Legends 3 was the last game that did that to me because I knew the harsh reality now that at any time, anything I truly wanted that I did not create or grasp for myself could be taken away in an instant with no remorse and that I could cry and wail and beg for eight years, all while quietly still supporting my favorite franchise and not get so much as a thank you from Capcom. 
I absolutely do agree. I mean, hell, again, uh, you weren't here, Coleman, but I actually do have a, a person in chat who I did get into Mega Man, and he's in his 20s. It is very possible. This is quite a tall order, to say the least. And also, me personally, I don't like telling people to skip games. That's just a me thing, though. Because they were getting all also, the profit from somewhere Actually, else. Actually, yeah, Smash is a was, is definitely a good uh a good thing. Uh, definitely a factor to it. But for one glorious moment, I had hope again. I had faith that Capcom would treat their fans right, and not just pamper and spoil their big three franchises. Mega Man was seemingly making a return. Devil May Cry 5 got announced. Capcom began developing new IPs. It was a magical time, and my faith in Capcom was being restored. Even non-Mega Man fans were calling this Capcom's redemption arc. But five years later, and I'm beginning to... I still think some of the things Capcom does is kind of cringe. But I can't deny they're definitely better than they were before. I don't know if you guys remember on Dust DLC. Those are those are the times, man. Little oh boy. But um I do think they're they are better. I mean, we, there's the whole thing with the DRM stuff and whatnot and that in itself is a mess because like that for sure uh I can't fully agree with what they're doing, but at the same time there's also this whole thing where they're like a lot of the things that they're doing is being told that it's being told way worse than say what it actually is. Like the whole thing with the DRM, uh, people were like saying, "Oh look, it has viruses. Oh god, it got malware." And oh geez, no, nah, it just turns out the guy had hentai games and he had a bunch of them. Oh, oh sheesh, bro. But yeah, it's like um, like. That's the thing that bothered me the most. It's, it's, like, it's like the constant misinformation that people are going to believe. And that, that's what really sucks. But that's not to excuse Capcom either. Capcom is doing some pretty dumb stuff. It's just... It's not as bad as you think it is. You know? Sometimes you gotta slap them in the face a little bit. Be like, stop. And uh, they won't, but... I just don't think they're that bad. I love, mis I love misinformation. Me when I spread misinformation, bro. <laughs> to feel something I am very familiar with. It's and that's me right now! <laughs> feeling, but it's one that I am oddly comfortable with. It's a deep feeling of disappointment, resentment, bitterness, and a profound lack of faith in oh, did he say that? Capcom. I don't want to feel this way, but what choice do I have? If you watched from the beginning and didn't skip around, You'd know that Mega Man has always been a part of my life. It is the primary reason I support Capcom at all in the first place. I'll never abandon Mega Man. But I'm also tired of waiting for something new to happen that's never coming. This pains me to say, but I would honestly prefer it if Capcom would just retire the franchise and tell us that this is the end. At least that Okay, the Chun-Li player with the mod. It's funny to think about. Alright, but this is the point, this is the part of the video that I truly waited to like really say. And my takes are a bit mixed. So on one end, let's just take the statement at face value. Should Mega Man be at that point where they're literally doing nothing with it and it's just being teased constantly and there's just, like, there's just no hope of a game coming out then I would agree like at that point maybe you should let the, the series rest because you're clearly not going to do anything with it maybe perhaps you should um, just let it go because you're not going to do anything with it. But let's take that statement to face value. I do agree with that statement. But then you have to really sit down and think about it. Is that truly what's happening right now? I agree with 
not like if if nothing was really done with Mega Man, then I would absolutely agree. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't really uh, let the let, let Mega Man linger like that. You should just say, "Hey, we're just not going to make any more." That's it. But that's not where Mega Man's at right now, and that's why. Even though I agree with the statement at face value, I can't agree with the statement right this very moment because Mega Man's not at that level. Mega Man's not at that point where it's so dead, it's so uh, out of reach that there's just nothing going to come out. I just, I just do not agree with that at all. Um, and I mean, our, our. I have a good night, Coleman. I mean, I'm gonna upload this later, so if you want to listen at some point, uh, by all means, uh, I'm gonna my ass is gonna stay up all night to uh, edit this anyway. So, but have a good night and thanks for coming by. It really means a lot. Um, but yeah, so Mega Man's just not at that point. Uh, we we definitely are like the Doomers. I don't blame them for thinking this way. That's just the thing, right? I like I I don't necessarily blame someone who's doom pilled super hard in the in thinking this way but at the very same time maybe cut down the dosage to like zero because i'm gonna be real it's not that bad it might seem very bad it might seem horrible to you but Mega Man is not at that point where it's like yeah let's put the dog down i did now i i did say this a while ago right but that was just me being very exaggerated, being, uh, me. But to tr like if to speak objectively, to truly sit down and think about it, they're just not in that level. And if they do get to that point, it's gonna be a very hot minute. Like you'd have to be doing maybe not even double digit million, double digit millions, like multi millions. They're in fourth place. It's not top, it's not top three, but they're still up there. So, um, I believe Shadow Rock did say it in the video, though. Like, if maybe we get to that point where it's, like, been eight years or so and there hasn't been a Mega Man game, then maybe, perhaps, probably, you might have the right to bring out the pitchforks. Sure. But I do truly think that there is something's gonna happen i don't know what i'm not a capcom dev by any means necessary i just for some reason play these games a little too much probably but it is it is pretty weird to say that uh i'm gonna hang the towel when there's still something there but at the very same time, I don't blame people for feeling that way to the point where they just don't want to care anymore. Because, I mean, truth be told, I'm kind of at that point. The only difference with me, at least, is um, at this point, I'm just going to relish and enjoy what I have. Like, I mean, look at me, I'm playing the fucking Battle Network series, for God's sakes, like... And then, like, I'm going to look at the other stuff as well. I, I still, to this day, play some of the Mega Man games here and there. Like, we all do it. But, you know, we, en we enjoy the stuff for a reason. And we're going we're gonna to go back to it at some point. We do go back to it. And if something new comes out, that's perfectly fine. But before, I said, I didn't, I didn't lose hope in Capcom. I've lost confidence in Capcom. I do, at, at this very moment, I don't have any confidence. I don't, or my confidence is very little that something's going to come out relatively soon. And that's fine. Because at the very end of the day, Capcom's a business. They want to make money. And clearly, whether you like it or not, Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and Street Fighter make numbers. And then they have some other stuff too. But that doesn't mean they've forgotten Mega Man. You just have to have patience. Because certain events happened, you're kind of at that point where you have to have the patience. But obviously, you cannot tell people to have that patience because not everybody has that patience. So, me personally, what I definitely have been getting more into is the fan games. 
Because even though there have not been actual Mega Man games, there have been Mega Man games. They just don't have that Mega Man title. And this is the part where I'm going to absolutely shell the shit out of some of these games. But, I mean, we've seen them left and right. Like, we've seen spiritual successors. We've seen um, fan games. We've seen all this cool stuff, bro. Uh, like, it it kind of started with Mighty Number no. 9. I know it's a piece of shit, but it's something. But then you have things like Gunvolt. You have things like Gravity Circuit. Shit, I'm, my, my ass is enjoying Lunar Lux like crazy. God damn, that game's great. And then we have Berserker Boy coming out. And trust me, there is so much more out there that I have more confidence in the fans bringing Mega Man games than Capcom at this very point. But that doesn't mean necessarily mean that you gotta, uh, like, I wouldn't necessarily already give up on Capcom. Keep an eye on them. Keep an ear on them. But I don't blame you if you feel like you've waited too long for a Mega Man game. But trust me, there are Mega Man games out there. You just gotta open your eyes and look. I've been shilling the shit out of Gravity Circuit and Lunar Lux. Quinn will absolutely shill the shit out of Gravity Circuit. Hands down. I just I can't stop, okay? But at the end of the day, like, they are there. They're absolutely there. You just have to, uh... Look around. Hell, a uh, funny thing, uh... At least me personally, um... I found both Gravity Circuit and Lunar Lux out of pure happenstance. Complete happenstance. How did I find Gravity Circuit? It's quite simple. I found the artist, the 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 music the musician, Dominic Ninmark. I found his uh Mega Man Battle Network uh Eurobeat remix. That shit was that shit's gas. And then it turns out, oh he's the fucking composer for Gravity Circuit. Oh, that's, that's a pretty cool game. What the hell is that, that, that about? I played the game. I fucking cried. That game's like a 10 out of 10 for me. And then Lunar Lux, how did I find that? In the sea of titties and ass that is my Twitter timeline, it was recommended to me via a random tweet talking about, hey guys, check out this new game uh, based on the Mega Man... Uh, I forgot what the tweet itself said, but it was basically kind of saying, hey, uh, this is a new game called Lunar Lux, and it's very um, associated with... It, it's basically brought up as Mega Man Star Wars. I'm like, oh, well, shit. How come I never heard of this game? And then I play the game, and I 100% it, like, last week. Yeah, so it's like, holy shit, like... Wow. How the fuck did I miss this? Because they, they, like, they had, like, a whole Kickstarter and everything. I missed it! But, hey, I'm glad I got it now, and look look at that. I, I have, like, what, 40-something hours in that game now? Something like that? And I'm still streaming the, streaming the game. Absolutely. I'm having such a blast. So, I guarantee you, it might not be the Mega Man game that you want by Capcom, but there are Mega Man games out there for you. I guarantee it. Then, we wouldn't have any false hope left to destroy. And what's the alternative? Capcom releases one new Mega Man game every 10 years? Is that normal? Is that really all we can expect? While Street Fighter, Resident Evil, and Monster Hunter get new games, expansions, and... I hope we get a Resident Evil 43. It ain't, I don't think it's gonna happen in my lifetime, but I, I do hope... I, I hope. It'd be so funny. It'd be so funny. <laughs> See? Constantly? In the time I've been waiting for a new Mega Man game, not counting Mega Man 11, entire people have been born and grown up in the gaps between releases. If you don't... Yeah. <laughs> Who got married? Okay. Mega Man is so... old. And so much has happened. That I knew somebody who I knew for quite some time. And he got married. And guess what? His name's Shadowrock. Majority of Mega Man games available to people are from multiple decades prior. 
An entire decade of my own life has gone by with effectively no new Mega Man content. I say without a drop of irony that I fear that my life will be near its end before this trend reverses. So here we are. The fans that never stop cheering, as well as never stops. Listen, I might be in my hospital bed when we get that Mega Man X9 finally, but you bet your ass are going to pop off in my AV bag, I'm just saying. Suffering. We keep making our voices heard loud and clear, but either Capcom is ignoring us or is too inept to take action. Either option is a terrible reality to live in. But it's not like we'd ever know which one it is, as Capcom seems dead set on radio silence and stringing us along with rumors and promises. Yeah, that's true. Damn, man. But that is, uh... That is the nature of it. Rest in peace, Raceoff. Not that those promises mean anything, given Capcom's track record. The obvious option is to assume the worst about any new Mega Man project. Over the last five years, I was slowly convinced that Capcom is back, that things would get better now, that everyone else was just being a doom and gloomy naysayer. But now, I'm not so sure. How much more of this can we take? Were we really all fooled by one new game and a string of model kits? Oh, sorry. If this ever reaches the ears of Capcom, we are begging you, give us an answer. Either show, not tell us, that something is coming, or just pull the plug and let us enjoy what we have. But whatever you do, stop stringing us along. By the time- I mean, you still can enjoy what you got. I mean, that's what we've been doing <clears throat> this entire time. But, yeah, it's like- I, uh... I cannot agree with the dooming. Like, okay, I joke about it, and sometimes I'll, like, join in on it, too, because I, I, like, I like jokes. I like to uh, joke around and kind of, like, prod the, prod the cow, you know? Things like that, but in actuality, it's like, it's really... It really isn't that doom and gloom. And if you feel like it's that way... I suggest, I heavily suggest, that you kind of get out of that slump, man. I, I legitimately feel like you will definitely feel a lot better um, than if you were to just stay doomy and gloomy. And keep it, take it from me, a person who's been depressed for quite some time to the point where I eventually said, you know what? It's either I stay depressed for the rest of my life and live in and wallow or I actually do something about it. And yes, that is the million dollar question. Will the next game come out before corrupted? The world may never know. It would be really funny though. I'm a new Mega Man game comes if it ever does you'll have already destroyed all the goodwill the fan base has cultivated for you. If it ever reaches the point that nobody cares about a new Mega Man game coming out, I want to make it explicitly clear. You'll have only yourselves to blame for it. We tried. We begged. We pleaded. We supported you with all of our might, and you ignored us. Don't let things reach the point of no return. But I'm warning you, if your biggest fans are losing faith, the fans who grew up trying to be virtuous like Mega That's Man pretty X, meta. who grew up inspired by Rock and his courage, the ones who dreamt of a prosperous future where technology makes dreams come true and elevates mankind, the ones who modeled their morals after the blue heroes on their TV and game screens, who changed their lives, you are steadfast on your way to losing everyone. Somehow, against the odds, Mega Man, a largely abandoned game IP, continues to attract new fans. But those same fans will continue to bleed off if there is no new content to keep them around. 
if the only fans left are the casual fans and newbies who don't really care about a decade between releases because all the ride or die Mega Man fans have died rather than ride, why even bother making games anymore? From a business perspective, you've lost the diehard fans. You're basically starting the franchise from scratch again in terms of buyers because everyone else has already bled off and given up. Instead of retaining and instead, they went into Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, <laughs> Street Fighter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, this this mentality is just not even remotely healthy by any means necessary. Like, all, no jokes. Like, it, like, to keep having that mentality of, like, truly hanging on to only Mega Man and that's it. That's not good. At all. Like, not even remotely. And, uh... Now, obviously, I would like to hope and think that he doesn't truly feel that way. At least, um... How do I say it? Uh... I do hope that, even though you, you, you say you feel this way, I I do hope that you are actually doing something else besides just waiting for Mega Man. I'll go into it a bit more, but uh, I do want to finish this up because there's actually a bit of a quote-unquote twist. Painting the loyal fans you've been accumulating since the 80s. Why start from scratch? Why do nothing and let everyone fall off? I don't think I'll ever stop hoping for a new Mega Man game because it truly is that deeply ingrained in me. But I'll never be able to fully enjoy it, even if it does happen, because I'll remember everything I did, and everything Capcom didn't do. This isn't just empty complaining. We've spoken with our wallets. We've expressed our opinions on every website. We've written physical letters, launched fan campaigns, and video essays. We have poured our hearts out. If a new game happens, great! But why did it take so long? Why did we have to go to such extreme lengths to get what we wanted? New Mega Man games feel like something we have to pry out of you, but other games are effectively a guaranteed inevitability. Why are you abandoning what was once one of your flagships? You made us wait eight years before. I don't want to wait another eight or more. You have three years left to turn it around. If 2026 comes, and there's still nothing, we'll know the eight-year drought wasn't a fluke, but the new normal. How sad that would be. Please don't waste a perfectly good fan base, Capcom. Don't waste a perfectly good game. Please do something. Anything. Alright, so I think he, he's going to actually address the video in its whole a bit, but I... Like, I'll, and I'll even comment what he says afterwards, but just taking this part and, be, and before, um, I do understand that, you know, you grew up with Mega Man. We may not have grown up the same way, per se, but, and, I mean, I, I, I feasibly can't say, like, I'm a giant super fan, and that in that sense but i am a pretty big fan like i mean i started youtube with battle network like it's just me s ranking the battle network six navvies that's literally how i started uh so to say that mega man wasn't a pretty big part of my life that that'd be lying to myself but at the very same time and it is that this just did did this did take me quite a few years but to, to get and comprehend, but at the very end of the day, you know, um, you have to learn to really accept the fact that, you know, maybe sometimes you're not going to get what you want. You're not going to get, uh, like your favorite company is not going to do what you want. So you gotta, you, you gotta find, uh, other outlets and other things to do. But, and actually, to, to truly end it off, I understand the sentiment that you're going with, 
but it's really hard to take it seriously when and I've watched this video several times, mind you, and then, and I, I'm even going to address that at the very end, but this really did sound like a very jolted X, where it's like, even though there's a bunch of other stuff to enjoy and like, you're so bitter and pessimistic about the one thing that you truly love that it's really hard to see... It's, it's it, it seems like it's hard to be happy and i and it's probably true and i hope that's not the case by any means necessary but i get it but i hope it, i hope it's not that's not the case but i will agree with one thing for sure and this is this is this is my absolute criticism with with capcom is y'all need to say something like like we don't deserve anything truth be told but if you truly want that goodwill, you probably should say something. You should probably be a bit more communicative and vocal about what's going on. Like, it, yeah, it is very disheartening. You, you, there is no denying that by any means necessary. And I, I kind of do feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit lost and, and like, oh well, are you gonna do something about it? Are you not? I don't, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know, like. I did wish we got something like we, we got like, whether it be like a letter or like some sort of something, anything to say something that like that, that is something that I wholeheartedly agree with. There needs to be more communication. Do we deserve it? Not really. And I don't mean like we don't deserve it. Like we shouldn't get it, but they really don't have to, but they should. And I feel like they would, but for some reason they're just not. Or maybe they just don't know what the fuck to say. Which is probably the case. But and the other big thing, my absolute one of my other criticisms with Capcom is they play too goddamn safe. They play so goddamn safe, and I absolutely yeah, we're not. Oh, that's that's what I'm trying to say. We're not like. Just because I demand something, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to give it to me, but it would be a really nice gesture. Like, it would actually, it would be, like, a really nice thing to happen. Because if you do it, then, hey, there's some goodwill that's there. Hey, you're actually listening, you're actually speaking, you're actually addressing it. And that puts confidence back. Because that's what I'm lacking right now, confidence. I, I got hardly any of it. I have hope, but I don't got that confidence. My ass is looking for a gravity circuit. That's what I'm doing, basically, if, if when it comes to Mega Man. But I understand that the, the whole thing in 2000 and that oversaturation of Mega Man happened, and it really, like, um, it did quite a bit of damage to Mega Man as a whole. But I feel like you can be a bit more risky. You can do a bit more than just figures that you know it's going to sell or put put things in crossovers like compass or things like that or you know or even just just collection because I, I i do agree in a sense where like collections are cool and all it's a very nice way to like modernize the games and put them in modern things but at the very end of the day it's not like it's nothing new and it would be cool to get something new but you know, I get it. Like the like getting burned that bad. It's it's really hard to like take that risk again. Again, it's a lot easier to to have convince somebody to make something new like Exo Primal than say, hey, let's do something with Mega Man because we don't know. But I do feel like time will tell and something perhaps will happen. But um, I'm actually going to let this video finish because uh, I did mention that this video is has a very negative connotation to it. And he sounds like a very jolted ex. But truth be told, he picked up on that. This is where I was going to originally end this letter. This guy has more to say. 
Yeah, I know, I never shut up. But over the course of editing this, I got some additional feedback, some alternative points of view, and I think it's better to end this all on a happier note. I realized that this video has had a pretty negative tone most of the way through, but I want it to be known that I greatly appreciate all that Mega Man and Capcom has done for me personally and the community. I don't want this to sound like we're all a bunch of kids banging our utensils on the table demanding more food. It's just that 2018 felt like having a really good home-cooked meal for the first time in a long while. And while X-Dive was a fun little distraction, it's sort of like eating a candy bar to hold you over until the next meal. The only problem is, I'm worried that next meal is going to be as far away as the last one was. And I don't want us going hungry again. The reason why myself and others are making such a big noise about Mega Man is not because we're ungrateful, but rather because we love Mega Man and Capcom so much, and the time spent away from them hurts. Some people say that maybe this is just how the franchise will be from now on, and we are just there to nurture the existing content and cherish what little we get. That is absolutely true, that we should be doing both of those things, but I also can't see why it has to only be that way. There is clearly a demand for more of our favorite blue hero. I just hope that the powers that be will answer the call. Sincerely, a lifelong fan, and the rest of the Mega Man fanbase. So that's the video in a nutshell. Even he realized that, yeah, hey, uh, I don't sound that great. And I'm glad he caught that. Although, if I had to be honest, I, I kinda, I mean, you probably wanted to take this video out as much, as soon as possible, which makes sense, right? Um, because like you've done so much work and to just outright essentially discard that and then kind of like make a cleaner, maybe more objective video. I get that. Like, maybe he didn't necessarily want to outright stop that. Or like, he just, he, he wanted to put out what he put, but he also wanted to put the message like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I didn't sound that great, but, uh, and I'm glad he did that. Uh, but I mean, the fact of the matter still remains. Um, as much as I like to joke about it, as much as I like to prod at it, it's not doom and gloom. And it's it could be a lot worse. It truly could be so much worse, but it's not as bad as you as, as you like to think. And I, you know, you see it on the Twitter, you see it in like some of the servers you hang out in. You know, it's like it gets very negative and very toxic because we just don't have a Mega Man game. And it is, I mean, it, it, it could be very well possible that we're going to be waiting years for a new one, if we even get one. We don't know. We legitimately don't know. I'm not Capcom. You're not Capcom. You might be Capcom, though. You should probably say something. But, yeah, really, you just, we, just, we just don't know. So, um, I like to hope. I like to think maybe down the line there will be one. But me personally... I'm not going to hold that confidence. So, you know what? Instead of holding out and waiting, I'm just going to look elsewhere. And I'm going to if I can find some, if I can find that same thing elsewhere, aka the fans spiritually bringing that alive, then you bet your ass I'm going to go there. But should something happen with Capcom and they actually do bring out something and maybe that legendary Tyson comes out, fantastic. But until then, personally speaking, I'm going to show the shit out of the Gravity Circuit and Lunar Lux. And you guys should buy those games. You absolutely should support those games. Um, I will not outright say whether or not to support or boycott Capcom. That's completely up to you. Uh, obviously, if you want a new Mega Man game, by all means necessary, uh, then yeah, vote for your vote with your wallet, and 
voting with your wallet doesn't necessarily mean, hey, buy all the stuff. If you truly are unhappy and you don't, and you feel like Capcom is not giving what you want, then not buying their things is also voting with your wallet. Because it basically says, hey man, you fucked up. I'm going to give my money to someone else like Nintendo or Microsoft or even Sony. Uh, there, there are plenty of other devs out there doing stuff. It's not just Capcom. So, yes, you can buy and support Mega Man by any means necessary, but you can also do the same with Capcom by not buying any of their stuff. But at the very end of the day, we're all people. We all have our opinions. We all have our wallets. You do what you got to do. The only thing is be respectful about it. Be uh, gentle with each other. And, uh... You know, don't disrespect people. I, like I said, I wanted to, I may have clowned and joked and things like that, but I I did try to, not to, not at his expense. I wanted to make sure that, yeah, it's, if, 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 there's, if there's any clowning of any sort, it's for some of the things that you may have said that sounded outlandish, not necessarily you per se. And, um, and then, yeah, like, if you truly want Mega Man, I guarantee you, you probably didn't play all the Mega Man games. I sure as hell didn't. Uh, by all means, hit them up. And, uh, you know, give them a shot. Maybe I will give Legends a shot, because I, I never cared about Legends at all, but maybe one of these days I actually will give it a shot. Um, uh, maybe I will find the One Piece somewhere at some point. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll play Dino Crisis. I'm sorry, I have to, I have to get that sick duck out there. <laughs> but, no, um... Really, really though, um... You just... Give it a shot. And, of course, hey, if you can get some people to start playing the games, by all means, like... They'll, like, just because uh, we have stories of, like, success, successes and failures, you're always gonna have a failure if you don't try. So... I'll always uh, give it a shot. I'll always, uh, you know, I want to make sure that the person likes it. And maybe, I mean, I could, I, in that other story, I could have probably done better by uh, suggesting something, suggesting it differently. But yeah, I, uh, I wholeheartedly believe that, um, I believe that there will be a Mega Man at some, in some point, but. Uh, I'm also gonna make sure I stay happy and healthy, and, you know, um, I wanna make sure I'm happy. I'm not gonna stick around for something, uh, that is true, um, that is absolutely true, and who knows, they might be cooking something with, uh, with Devil May Cry as well, we just don't know. It's just, uh, for some reason, Mega Man is, like, extremely vocal when it really shouldn't be. But it's like, you know. I... I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not gonna, like, I'll hope for things, but I'm just not gonna, like, truly wait there. Like, I'll just, like, come by every once in a while, like, hey, what's up? Oh, nothing? Alright, I'll be back later. Things like that. Not to mention, I'm with, like, you guys anyway, so if something does happen, you'll be telling me, be like, oh, shit, let me get on. <laughs> let me hop to it. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, my God. How long have I been going? Almost three hours and 40 minutes. Sweet Jesus. Uh, oh, God. I... I got a lot to do. But, um, yeah, at the very end of the day... I, yeah, that is true. Uh, there have been games that are got it a lot worse. I mean, shit, you can be those those devs that uh, EA kept buying and closing eventually, you know? You can be them. Uh, and then those games are essentially, like, dead in the water. Or at the very least, like, in the repertoire, but just kind of just there. Uh, so, yeah. Um, at this point, just... Enjoy what you got, you know. Hope your game doesn't become a battle royale. 
or gotcha game or uh an nft you know that's still so funny to me dude but anyways um i think that's about really all i have to say i i don't really got very much more to say uh so i'm glad people came by and like heard my words you know i'm just some guy at the end of the day but um you know i uh i'm glad that you guys uh are willing to listen even even those who watch it like after after the stream like just watch it as a youtube video that i'll put up you know uh, it means a lot so obviously you know if you if you weren't if you're interested in this type of stuff i'll i might consider doing more of this i don't know when because uh god this took a while but i don't mind doing it i, I enjoyed my time um and of course no shit flinging either like i that's not my goal so you know if he does see this i hope it's like no disrespect but regardless of how i feel so anyways thank you all for coming by holy shit i'm tired but i got things to do so i will see you guys tomorrow and i'm hoping to have this up at the very least tomorrow afternoon but if not probably thursday so we'll see don't be a jackass i love you all you all have a wonderful night and remember there will be a Mega Man game, but if not, there's always Gravity Circuit and Lunar Lux. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Have a good night. Bye, Gravity Circuit.